and welcome to Mighty Fine Shindig, a Firefly podcast. From Common Room Radio, I am Liz Stevens. I'm Sarah Kate Bazant. And I'm Vinton Bain, and we are just too pretty for God to let us die. Okay, so this week it is our very first, our inaugural episode of oh, man. Mighty Fine Shindig. We're like doing the thing, you guys. Yeah. Are you so excited? Because I'm, I'm so excited. I'm really excited. I'll tell you what's so exciting is watching the show again. It has really been a while. And I had said before, I had not watched it as many times as you guys had. Mm-hmm. But since I was going at it like with a more analytical perspective... Damn, this is a good show, y'all. Yeah, okay, can I say that too? Like, I watched the episode um, just a couple of hours ago. I gave myself just enough time to squeak by before we sat down to record. Because <laughs> you're a professional. Because I'm a professional. And that was a mistake. And that is a professional mistake that I will <laughs> never make again. Because you guys, this show is so damn good. I yeah. stopped taking notes halfway through because I was absorbed in what was going on in the show. Oh. And I've seen this episode like a dozen, two dozen mm-hmm. times. But I still was enamored by everything that was happening. Enamored. Good word. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, Vinton is a professional and he has or may not have 10 pages of color-coded notes for I it. do have 10 <laughs> pages of color-coded notes, most of which I will not probably get to. That's totally fine. can only be so long. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. You go as long as you want. I'll deal with all the cutting. <laughs> So welcome, everybody. We are super excited to get through this. Tonight, we are doing um, the first two episodes of Firefly, which are titled Serenity, which, again, Mm -hmm. confusing because the film, which we will be ending the podcast with, also called Serenity. That is confusing. With a similar runtime. I heard, is it true that that when this show was actually launched on Fox, they started with Train Job? They yes. did. Fox actually made them create Train Job in such a way that it would be a pilot because they, wa- they got the script or something from the first original pilot, this Serenity, and said, no, no. They wanted a high-octane, high-adventure, action-packed pilot in order to draw people into the show. What are you talking about? Like, we open at the Battle of Serenity, then we have Crazy Ivan. I I I mean, there's plenty of stuff going on. This pilot episode, this 2 You know what I don't remember? Train job. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) This two-parter actually didn't air until the very last. Yeah. They showed it at the very last thing. At the very end? Yep. Yep. That's they also didn't show. Uh, and they also didn't show a few episodes. Yeah, they, they didn't ended, do Heart of Gold, yeah. and there was another one. Was <gasps> it Out of Gas? Of they didn't do. They got canceled yeah. before they before out of they gas showed is a weird. few of them. Out of no, Out of Gas is really good. You're remembering wrong. I should probably I might take, be have taken notes wrong. on what they showed and didn't because I couldn't tell you actually. No, well, well, Out of Gas is good. I think it's like yeah. three to four episodes they didn't show. I which is insane. I don't know what was going. I mean, like this show picked up such a cult fall. Everyone loves this show. I'm there well, there are show. two kinds of people in this world. Uh-huh. There are people who love Firefly, and there are people who haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that when it was first introduced to me, it took me some time, actually. Um, and I'm not sure really why. I think maybe, well, it was my first Whedon, first of all. Oh, yeah. So mm. you do have to kind of get used to Joss Whedon. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, he runs a, his own show, right. mm-hmm. which is great. He has a very strong narrative voice that I have grown to love. Yes. But it was my first one, so I was just a little bit thrown by it just mm-hmm. at first. And also the world building is bonkers. And I'm immense. Mean, I love it now. Yeah. But like space cowboys and China and I don't, there's lots going on. I have a question for both of you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Did you know that a lot of people think that Joss Whedon completely ripped off Firefly from an <gasps> anima- from a Japanese animation show? I know about the anime that you're talking about, uh-huh. Outlaw Star, right? Outlaw Star. Outlaw, Outlaw Star, Star is an amazing anime. Its first episode also deals with a bunch of ruffians on a ship, and there is a girl in a box who wakes up naked at the end who of the the government pilot. is chasing, well... and she has powers, and there's someone that kidnapped her from the government. There's a lot of similarities throughout the whole show, even yeah. up until Serenity the movie. There's a lot of similarities. Mm-hmm. I knew some of them, but earlier today I watched a 10 minute video that just compared them and I was blown away. I was like, oh, Do you know which one came what? out first? Did Outlaw Star come yes, out first? Four years previous. Oh, also, oh, Outlaw Star, really great stripper name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, Outlaw Star, the name of the ship and the name of the show. <gasps> oh, cool. Yeah. All yeah. Right. So, anyways. It's interesting. I think that anyone that likes Firefly and could possibly like anime, check out Outlaw Star. I think you'll really like it. But that's as much as I'm going to say. Whether Joss Whedon ripped it off or not, I don't think he did. Everything's Maybe in the ether. Maybe he was just inspired. Things everybody steals from everybody. He said everybody does steal from everybody. He has said that he's never seen it. So I think we should probably give a quick overview of what Firefly is as a show. That sounds great. Would that's you please do that for us? Firefly is an American space Western drama, or as the cast and creators like to call it a 
post-apocalyptic western, which I really like. Oh, I do that's like awesome. That. Especially before post post-apocalyptic was so overused. Right. <laughs> yeah. It was created by writer and director Joss Whedon, who served mm-hmm. as the executive producer along with Tim Minear. He worked on Angel at the time, and yes. Whedon stole him from that. Mm-hmm. And Whedon was inspired by this book, Killer Angels, which is a Civil War novel by Michael Shara, which talks about losing a war and what it's like to go on when you lose a war as, <gasps> as an individual. Oh, that's really, really interesting. What you see in this, except yeah. Joss Whedon said, what if it was a Han Solo type? Ooh. <laughs> God, he is a Han Solo Yeah, yeah speaking of cowboys type. in space. Yeah, speaking of. Yeah. Damn, so series, I have a type, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so the series is set in the year 2517 and follows the adventures of the renegade crew of a Firefly-class spaceship known as as serenity. Ooh. Um, and so we're going to give just a super brief overview of what is going on in this episode, and then we'll jump into our beat by beat. I want to know what's going on here. Well, then why don't we find out? So Serenity, the episode, not to be confused with the film that ends everything, came out in December 20th, 2002. In 2003, it won the award for Best Visual Effects in a Television Series from really? Visual Effects Society and was nominated for a Hugo Award in 2003 for Best Dramatic Presentation Short Form. That's well, incredible. Dang. Yeah, yeah, I had no idea. This pilot's amazing. The I don't pilot understand so why good. Fox would not have aired this I as a I don't know. What it's was, great. It's I brilliant. don't know. It's an excellent opening. It, it really, really grabs is. you right from the beginning because not only are you on this awesome epic war field, yes. but... Captain Mal is, well, he's not Captain now, he's Sergeant. So yep. S- Sergeant right. Reynolds, yeah, is just a commanding presence. He's awesome. And charismatic to And boot. charismatic. And then Zoe, who is expecting this beautiful Amazon woman just completely kicking ass and calling, you know, uh, what was it, Bendis, who was like yeah. losing his cool on the battlefield. Bendis, who looked about 19 <laughs> years old. Yeah. And ready to pee himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and she was just taking command of the situation. She was keeping everybody in line. You could see how much Captain Reynolds, Sergeant Reynolds, <laughs> you can see how much Reynolds was relying on her. It's a great opening. And gosh, heartbreaking, too. Absolutely heartbreaking. Waiting for their... Uh, Waiting for the the command. Okay, so they are a part of the independents who are fighting against the Anglo-Sino alliance. In this future, what has happened is that the great superpowers of the world, uh, America and basically all of Asia, have Mm -hmm. combined into the Anglo-Sino alliance. And so the independents, the brown coats, are fighting against them. Um, but so, yeah, we're introduced to uh, Sergeant Malcolm Reynolds and to Corporal Zoe, uh, who is not Zoe Washburn at that time no. yet, because this is actually six years mean, prior to the uh, main events of the story. What's really interesting about this opening, I think, is that at one point, Zoe turns away from Mal to go and like handle um, either the radio operator to deal with Bendis. And then Mal reaches into his shirt and pulls out a cross necklace and kisses and it. And kisses it. Oh, I had forgotten about that, and I missed it this time. I'm so glad you pulled that out, Mm -hmm. because that's really important. Well, seeing how much he's changed the next time we see him is really important, period. Yes. And I had forgotten just how delicately and beautifully they'd done that. Did you know that there was originally a different opening to this show? I didn't. There's two deleted scenes from this episode, and and both of them are related to the opening. Both of them weren't at the opening, but they're both related. Mm -hmm. The first one, it was actually supposed to open just after the events that you see in Serenity Valley there, where... The war is already over and Mal and Zoe and all of their soldiers around them are starving and dying in that valley because they were left <gasps> That's there. right. They're oh holding the valley. Yeah. yeah. And finally ships arrived to take them. And you find out in the next del- deleted scene that it was a week later. Oh they were there for gosh. a week just waiting while the peace oh, was negotiated. Geez. And as the ships arrive, Zoe says, thank God. And Mal says, I wonder whose flags God flies. Wow. Oh, or something snap. to that extent. Basically, that's when he lost his faith in God. You, you see yeah. the kissing of the cross and everything right. goes to hell and he no longer can trust God. Well, because he watches, oh. you see, it's that beautiful scene where Zoe tells him, Command is telling us we got to lay down arms, that it's too hot, they're pulling out. Yeah, and and like, Mal is in disbelief. Hearing? He can't believe that this is happening. And he that's stands right. up and looks over the ridge and you see dozens of Alliance ships Huge. coming down to the yeah. end, like just yeah. like carpet bombing the whole place, like blasting guns everywhere. And Bendis stands up next to him. You see Bendis get shot down. Mm-hmm. And like, of course, the that, violin I mean, oh, gosh. starts, the music is yeah, just Yeah, the music them. swells up. Yeah. It's so beautiful and so incredible. Oh. And then we cut from that to six years later, 
Silence in space. Silence, yeah. Which, Which is one of my very cut. yes. It's a great cut, and that's one of my very favorite things about this show is that you can't hear stuff in space. Space is a vacuum. Yep, sound and they do doesn't that really travel, well. mm-hmm. and they do that great. The only noises you'll hear in space in this show are music, background yeah. music. Yep. I will say too that that second deleted scene does come up later in the episode, mm-hmm. but it really touches on what just happened there because it's Simon later wanting to know more about why the ship's called Serenity. And oh, yeah. Book tells him, look up Serenity Valley. And it doesn't really tell him much on his little iPad thing with right. his medical journal. Mm-hmm. And Zoe overhears it and comes in and starts talking about it and tells him that they were starving there and that all these things went wrong and talks about how Mal completely changed as a person and just really yeah. lays out everything that happened. And it's the fact that those two scenes aren't included just really bothers me because they're both amazing devastating. Yeah. scenes <laughs> that you learn so much about these characters. Yeah. And even then, uh, I think Zoe tells Simon that Mal won't kill him unless he has no other option. You get a bit more of mm-hmm. who he is. And then he asks her, like, well, what about you? What if he orders you to kill me? And she's like, I'll kill you. And then walks out. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, I, I won't disobey my captain's orders. <laughs> Zoe is a great soldier, even she when she's soldier. no longer a part of right. the war. But mm-hmm. then Simon asks, So why name your ship after this place where all these horrible things Mm -hmm. happen? And Zoe says, once you've been in Serenity, you never leave. Oh, gosh. I just got such a good line. Oh, that's great. Good line. I hate that. Six years later. Wow. (laughs) Cut to space. So we're in space. We see Mal, Zoe, and Jane, who his face says thug, and he definitely is that. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. And uh, like I said, complete silence at this point. Um, we see that they are blasting open the door of this derelict, burnt-out wreck, and they're trying to get their scavenging goods from the mm-hmm. inside. So um, we get this super cool effect where it's basically a hot glue gun with a string in it. Yeah. I love that effect. Well, it's the- wires. Yes. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. those wires in there. It's, uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like blasting gel yes. or whatever. Yep. Um, and it, I, I was reading through the script and it literally says a hot glue gun looking thing. Those are <laughs> verbatim the words from the thing. script. Yep. <laughs> And it I just, love it. It really made me appreciate it. Um, but I love the prop work throughout this entire series. Yeah. It's, they do yeah. really interesting and awesome stuff with the 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 props that they are given and mm-hmm. what they're supposed to be. The costuming, know. too. The costuming is also brilliant. Mm-hmm. I mean, like just the design, the aesthetic of this show yes. is brilliant. And one of my yeah. very favorite things, I was um, uh, just looking at everybody's costuming. I was watching um, as Mal and Zoe later in the episode are walking through the desert to meet with patients. And I was like, their boots are filthy. And I was like, yes. they ought to be filthy. Uh-huh. Like there, and I'm glad that nobody looks like squeaky clean. Like the cleanest person you see is Simon, Simon when he Tan. first gets yep. on the ship, mm-hmm. and you're like, mm, I don't trust that guy. <laughs> Everything is dirty until you see Alliance members or Alliance space yes. stations. Yeah. And yes, yes, super clean. The other thing about that is that Joss Whedon specifically really liked shaky cam, so he, he liked did. documentary style where it's handheld cameras to the point where they had such a good handheld camera operator that he held it too steady, and Joss was like, "You have to start shaking more." Yes, and I'm getting tired mm-hmm. of you being so steady. And if I I remember right this is one of the first huh. I mean like shaky cam is pretty popular now in a lot right. of films and TV shows but I feel like this was one of the first times that yeah, it was a non-documentary style yeah. show where they did that shaky right. cam and part of the reason they did that was that it helped with the effects some because if the camera's moving around you can't quite tell with some of the effects that right. it's computer effects to be fair it also hurt with some of the effects Not yes. it actually didn't hurt the show but Joss Whedon was really impressed with the effects team that they could put in like Laying over effects over books or screens when the camera was shaking. Yes. <laughs> wow. it looking mm-hmm. good. Yeah. But like whenever Badger holds up that sheet that has all the yes. moving text right. on it. And uh-huh. like the camera, I mean, like that would be a lot easier if your camera was Definitely. like a stud, like a stuck shot and like yeah. stayed right there. But yeah, the effects team on this show is, I mean, like, especially for 2002, this show came out. CGI, I remember yeah. watching Buffy and Angel in 2002, and the CGI wasn't great yet. <laughs> also, this show had way less of a budget than Buffy yes. and Angel. Mm-hmm. It was their oh, really? especially. Show. Yeah, mm-hmm. at this point, Buffy had actually just been transferred from uh, the WB. It was that it's the CW now, but yeah. it had just been transferred the from the frog. WB. I yes, him. over <laughs> to UPN, and UPN oh. spent a ton of money really? to get Buffy the Vampire Slayer. They spent a ton of money on marketing, um, and like Is just UPN spent a ton. Even still a thing? No, I don't think so. Uh, it's called something else now. I think ah. it's still around. Yeah, it probably got eaten up by something else. Yep. Yes. 
but talking about that steady cam thing, mm-hmm. the reason I brought that up is because the Alliance, when you go to the Alliance, yes, everything yes, is yes, still yes. cameras yes. and everything is clean and everything mm-hmm. is anesthetic looking because he wanted that Star Trek feel. Everything yes. is super clean oh, and clean yeah. cut because mm-hmm. it's the Alliance. Mm-hmm. They're also wearing costumes from the movie Starship Troopers. Yep, the, their, their military oh, officers yep. are wearing the exact costume just painted. Now. Yeah. And they okay. just have one coat of paint. It's not like they did anything else to them. They just mm-hmm. put a coat of paint over them and said, that's that's good. Exactly. That, yeah. Yeah. For me. But I loved how grungy and dirty the inside yeah. of Serenity looked. And then you're exactly right. When you cut to the IAV Dortmunder is the name of Dortmunder? that giant ship. Yeah, yeah Dortmunder. And it looks like a floating city. It's like it, Real it does, tall. yes. It's, it does. Like, it's like upright yeah. and like, it's like towers. It's yep. like these three towers it's like really kind of cool zooming looking. through. Yes. Yeah. And it's huge, mm-hmm. like gigantic compared to Serenity, which is like a, it's like a tiny firefly compared to it. <laughs> compared, mm-hmm. yep. There's some kind of government analogy to be made here. A giant impending thing that doesn't look practical. Exactly. Yeah, no, <laughs> right? impractical is all get out. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's no way that that thing. How do you thing, land it? How do you fly it? What is the wind? Res- how do you get <laughs> that out the of the. Yeah. Once you're out of the atmosphere, it doesn't matter anymore. No, because no gravity but right getting it out there well and nathan and i were actually talking about this earlier i was like we just have to whisk i mean like science fiction i love i love me some sci-fi i love me some firefly yeah so some i'm doing a podcast about it but i mean there is quite a bit you you just gotta whistle past that okay we somehow have developed faster than light travel and we're just never gonna really bring it up it's just a thing that yep. we have everybody's yep. have it even junker ships like serenity i don't think serenity is a junker but some people would say that it is yeah. has <laughs> like <laughs> ftl travel uh-huh. uh capabilities and everybody is able to just get into and out of atmospheres all the time without it being a thing and it's like efficient and we're able to do it i mean like getting into space is super expensive that's why nasa has no money yeah Yeah. so at this point you cut to one of my favorite scenes in this whole episode (laughs) which is when wash is playing with dinosaurs on the control panel very (laughs) favorite thing alan tudyk is a national treasure (laughs) and it really helps with the tone of the show because up until that point everything is real solemn and great Mm -hmm. yes very serious You, you go from a war scene to a scavenging scene and then Wash is playing with dinosaurs. A grown man playing with plastic dinosaurs. Yep. So yeah, we get introduced to Wash there. He's sitting there. He's playing with the dinosaurs. And then suddenly there is um, an alarm that goes off in the console. And uh, they have this Alliance cruiser. The Dortmunder is coming in. And so mm-hmm. he's got to let um, everybody else know about it. Um, Mal tells Wash that he's got to cut all the power except for the air. We're introduced to Kaylee. Yes. Um, the genius young mechanic who I met her in real life, Jules yeah. Dady. I met her at a con. Yep. She is Lucky. surprisingly tall, but very, very <laughs> sweet. <laughs> she was very nice. It was really cool meeting her. I have a picture of her and I up on my refrigerator right now at home, actually. <laughs> that dinosaur scene up until Wash noticing the alliance there, that was the scene he had the audition with. Mm-hmm. And so he came into this show and they were like, all right, play with these dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't imagine what that was like. I don't even, I, I can't even begin to imagine what that was like. It's That's such a weird scene. the coolest scene, audition but, ever. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. What's this show again? <laughs> this is space drama, right? Also, I should mention that on the Alliance cruiser, the captain is Andy Umberger, who is the first hat trick that we see in Firefly. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, Sarah, wh- why don't you tell us what a hat trick is? I will. Yes, reason. I will happily explain this. So Joss Whedon um, has worked on many a show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Dollhouse, Firefly. He's um, uh, one of the executive producers for uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but he's not as involved with that. He did do the pilot for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, but he has just a couple of actors who he just really has an affinity for and really mm-hmm. enjoys working with. And if they are in at least three Joss Whedon TV shows, they are what is known as a Joss Whedon hat trick. So if they <laughs> popped up in Buffy, if they popped up in Angel, and then also popped up in Firefly, that's a hat trick. Yeah, um, Firefly is the first show that could have a hat trick. Exactly, it yeah. was the third show that he did. Yes, it was oh, after this cool. that he did Dollhouse, and then um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. obviously came many, many years later. Um, but yeah, there are even a couple of actors that he uses just kind of over and over, particularly in Buffy it was really easy because mm-hmm. you just slap on some different different demon right. makeup and then it's a different guy. Um, but Which is why hat tricks are often hard to notice because yes. they look completely different. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, who was he in the other shows? He was, I think, a demon in both shows. Oh, I probably know he was so. a that demon in Buffy and I think he was a demon in, in Angel, but he, I know he had lots of makeup in Buffy and would right. be unrecognizable. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure, of course. Summer Glau, even, who plays River, who we'll be introduced to later in the episode, she's not a hat trick necessarily, but she was first on Angel, I think, and um, I'm pretty sure that's accurate. She had to, she was like a, she was a dancer, actually. Yes, oh, that's um, true. I do remember that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And so she was on a, an episode of Angel, and then um, Joss Whedon really liked her work and wanted to pull mm-hmm. her in for Firefly, and so here we are. He's just plucking people from all over the place. That's right. Mm-hmm. I like that. So uh, we are introduced to Kaylee. We uh, get um, this really 
need okay so they need to get this alliance ship like off their back right? right and they do it in this really interesting way they have this scrumbled together piece of machinery uh-huh. that looks like a big oil drum with yes. stuff just duct taped to it yeah. cry <laughs> um, baby cry the cry, cry baby, baby. Cry. Yeah. Um, and it sends out a distress signal and it distracts the smart. alliance cruiser and genius yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> right like who would have thought of that a mal I guess yeah. You yeah. Just, yeah. Or, or wash or yeah. possibly I'm, wash on somebody, somebody did maybe yeah. the group of them possibly so yeah <laughs> they they seem to, you know they work together they're a family this is yeah. a show they about found family really well actually yes. I like that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so they send out the crybaby um, and uh, the alliance cruiser goes after that and then that is the end of our cold open or right. our teaser and then we cut to credits and we are given the introductory song written by Joss Whedon and performed by Sonny Rhodes so with the crybaby can we talk for a second about the fun language that they use in the show because yes. that's where yeah. I think they really start we first hear Goram yep. I think on the Battle of Serenity we, yes. we hear that right away mm-hmm. but we start to get the Chinese mm-hmm. and we start to get the uh, we're humped. <laughs> I love Cat okay. We're humped. <laughs> Look, I hate that so much. I actually feel like it's somehow more vulgar than having just said the F word. Are it you just, serious? Yeah, it just sounds super gross to me. Well, that's I don't know it, what like it is hump about is it. not a great word. It's not a great word. Like, <laughs> but I love it in that context. <laughs> no, it's it's just it just seems graphic. What about to like me? we're boned? Are you okay with we're boned? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I want to be boned or humped. Thank you. <laughs> The language in the show Rude is also be- see it's all it's all just what it is anyway. The language in the show is something beautiful. It and really it is. is a conglomeration of these different cultures. Yes, and then of course Joss Whedon and crew finding a way to overcome the censor board. Yes, <laughs> right. yes, and coming up with the most really ridiculous fun. things. Yeah, and, yeah. Really and they clever. don't even just cuss in Chinese or Mandarin, they find funny sentences the same. Yes. <laughs> funny yeah, later in this episode, somebody, uh, Mal says, uh, everyone under the heavens ought to die, is what he says. Uh-huh. He just rapid fires that off in Mandarin, <laughs> and it's just, Super it fun. is incredible. Yeah. Which I thought about going through and just making a list, and I was like, that would be a whole podcast to itself. I'm not For gonna real, do that. yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. too much. <laughs> Particularly fun ones we'll point out. Yeah. Um, as I was watching the episode, I did keep pausing and then grab my script book, and I was like, what did they just say? So. <laughs> Which, some of them aren't in the script book, and that bothers That's me. That's true, I know, <laughs> Like, no, yeah. I need to know. But there are translators out there. You can just Google it. And there's whole web pages dedicated to showing you what everything they yes, say. Yes, yes. Do that thing. So. Well, the alliance, I think, was painted really well as how, how they are still the enemy, but it's different. How it's like this right. Cold War now. Yeah. Because when he calls Mal a low life vulture and we just saw him as such a a uh, hero of yes. war. Yes. Like, yeah. Which we didn't even touch on this, but that speech that he gave and that, that honor that he had. Yes, there. absolutely. He was, yeah, he he was such a man of honor for sure. Is still a man of honor. Yeah. But to see him really reduced in circumstance and to then have this guy call him a low life vulture and then later say, maybe somebody else will step on these roaches. Yeah, somebody will get those roaches. Once Mal comes back into the ship right before we see Firefly light up for the first time and mm-hmm. how beautiful the ship is and how she got her name, yeah. which is also a great piece of, of television, we see that look on his face of just disappointment. And, yeah. and not disappointment, like he got what he was after. They got the prize, mm-hmm. they pulled it back we into win. the ship, they got away. And she says, we win. Yeah, and you see that, God, all the romance is just out of his life. Mm-hmm. And yep, we win. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now we can move on to the opening and the song. The song! Let's talk about it. It's so good. It's so it good. is so good. I'm so glad that we're all in agreement about yes. this because there is some like visceral, all out hatred that we are about to hear about. It's about to yeah. blow up our Twitter I feed about people who hate this song. Because I honestly don't know of a theme song for a show that more perfectly encapsulates, encapsulates everything that that show will be. Yeah. I think it's lovely. Uh, I I really like the tone of it a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that the words, the language is really poetic. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Amanda Walter, who definitely did it for hashtag tipsy poetry readings. (laughs) Very nice. And it was amazing. Good job. Good job, Amanda. And even the animation in it, the way the words glimmer. Yes, how they're like burning through. It's really great. Yeah. The way that um, everybody's uh, like in these various colors, like flashing across the screen as we're seeing all of our um, all of our cast. I I really enjoy this opening. I really do. And it's kind of an homage to Star Trek, too, I think, because you've got like the the ships in space with the music and the Mm -hmm. quiet, Mm -hmm. I, I feel like. My favorite part of the whole thing is the very last scene where you see the ship just 
coming in over the horses and the horses are running. Yeah. It just sets up yeah. everything. Yeah. It, it does. Everything mm -hmm. so perfect for What is the show I about? Never Cowboys in space. Cowboys, yep. I see the horses and I see the wild frontier there. Oh, there's our spaceship. <laughs> all right, I'm sold. <laughs> Nailed Let's, it. What's happening? Got it. Let's do this. Yeah. Yes. Good. We're Explained. all in agreement. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, and we just, I mean, this cast, you guys, this is one of my favorite ensemble casts of all time. Surprise, surprise, Common Room Radio is doing another podcast where we love found family. So, oh, yeah. what do you yeah. know? Mm, shocker. Yeah. Well, Joss Whedon, I mean, Joss he Whedon. himself says that all of his stories are about creating family. Oh, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Which think that's explains true. so much of why I love his work. Yeah. And yes. I understand why they handed him Avengers. When you look at, Firefly, which has nine characters to That's juggle. That's true. Mm -hmm. Nine. Mm -hmm. That's people talk often about how hard it is to juggle four or five characters. He's got right. nine here. Yes. And perfectly executed. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's really wonderful work. It really is. You don't really feel like any character is ever slighted or not given enough time. And again, that helps because this is a TV show versus a two and a half hour movie. Yeah. Um, where we are given time to get to know everyone as we go. But yeah, so our cast. So let's start with uh, Nathan Fillion is amazing. And hysterical okay. and Type handsome. Pants. Nathan Fillion, Captain Tight Pants. Yeah. Captain Hammer also. He also <laughs> Captain Hammer, the hammer. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Many much captains. <laughs> um, Nathan Fillion really, uh, it sounds weird to say, but it's like I'm so proud of him for this role. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But like it's it's not the, uh, he shone in this, in this yeah. role so much he shined. He yep. was born Sean, for this role. He was born for it, is mm -hmm. all I have to say. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself as I was watching the show, I was like, why do I love Mal so much? And I was like, because he's kind of an emotionally inaccessible asshole. That's my type, <laughs> I think. <laughs> well played, Nathan Fillion. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, uh... He often talks lovingly about this show and about Joss Whedon because Joss Whedon was the one to give him his chance. No yeah. one else would cast him as a front man. They'd be like, oh, you're the ex or you're this guy and you're just going to show up for a couple episodes. You're the jock. You're, disappear. Yeah. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. the jock. But Joss said, no, I'm going to make this guy in the, the front running here. Yeah. And talking about that emotionally inaccessible, there was a few times where I guess Joss Whedon had to be like, hey, you need to calm down. You're be being too happy. <laughs> <laughs> Because That's Mal adorable. would just get like, real, or Mal, Nathan, Nathan would just get real excited on stage and just be himself. And they're like, that's you. And, and he would even say, he was like, I have a hard time with this character. Yeah. Because <laughs> I want to have fun. <laughs> Mal doesn't want to have fun. <laughs> Mal doesn't want to have fun. It's true. Mal's gotten very serious in his old age, dear, dear heart. Mm -hmm. Aw. Um, and then we have Gina Torres playing Zoe. She's, She's so good. So good. Has she done other stuff? What else has she done? Uh, she's in Westworld right now, apparently. Yeah. I have to see Westworld. I really want to see Westworld. I have to see Westworld. It looks so good. Have Someone give us HBO. Based on? No. no. It's an older movie. It's like, what? Uh, I want to say 70s movie. It's really, really? good. Really? Okay. All right. I've heard good Give things. us the movie. I haven't seen the new series yet. And give us the HBO. She was also in The Matrix. Really? Okay. The, I think uh, the sequel is not the Oh, original. okay. All right. And I only remember was, the first one. <laughs> she was an angel. Okay. And Almost a hat trick. And Xena. Huh, Those that's really like, interesting. Think, you know, Nina, I think that she also popped up. Warrior Princess. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of Lucy course Wallace. she was. Was she a warrior princess? She played Cleopatra. She played Cleopatra. Of course she yeah, did. Yeah, you did, Gina. Yeah, you did. Excellent work, Gina. Good job. Okay, she does amazing as Zoe. She's great. Um, another, like, say what you will about... I mean, I know that Joss, Joss Whedon doesn't always perfectly treat his female characters 100% the way mm -hmm. that we would like for them to be treated all the time, always. Um... But he does great work with Zoe. I, I am do like, Zoe. like Zoe. I she we will get to see more of her as we're going on. But she uh, just I love her. Yeah. I love her so much. Speaking of treating women a certain way in your television show, Anara in this show is one of my favorites. Marina Bakarin. Because with the career of a prostitute. You are normally looked down on. Yes. You are not normally the classiest person on the ship. Uh -huh. You are not normally. And yet, <laughs> Joss Whedon wrote this character. She is the most respectable. Yes. Yep. She is the one that later the doctor and the priest come to for absolution. Uh-huh. Yeah. And she is the one that gives them access to everything. Yes. She is the classy leader. Also the cleanest person on the ship yes. aside from Simon, <laughs> which is good considering her job. <laughs> which, did you know that she wasn't originally cast in that role? I did not know that. That's a crying shame. I can't imagine it being anybody else. Seriously, right? Originally, yeah. it was Rebecca Gayhart. Rebecca Gayhart. And at the I time, what people might remember Rebecca Gayhart for 
is that she committed manslaughter, vehicular manslaughter, killing a child just around, you know, maybe a year or two before this. Maybe, maybe even less. Cricket. And so she was dealing with that while trying to film this. And apparently that was giving some problems and the cast wasn't really uh, fitting too well with her. And Joss knew this wasn't working out. Wow. So he filmed her scenes as one shots going, zooming in on faces. Oh my goodness. So that when they brought oh in the new actress, he could just film her side of everything and oh splice it in. Oh dear. That's incredible. Right. <laughs> Well, Morena Baccarin is amazing yeah. as Inara. She really is one of my heroes. I don't think that surprises anybody. No, not There a while ago, there was this thing on Twitter, you describe yourself as three characters, and she was definitely one of mine. Yes. Also, I bought an Inara dress this yes, week, and I regret nothing. She's so great. Nothing. And she's and amazing. And to like, explain how great she is as a human being outside of the character, mm-hmm. when Joss Whedon went to look for other actresses to play this role, mm-hmm. he had a list, and one of his advisors or someone, I don't remember who exactly it was, came to him and was like, oh, there's this person you should check out before you check out the list. She's here. Why don't you just talk to her? And he talked to her and he went, we're not looking at that list, are we? <laughs> wow. That is amazing. It was done. Yeah. She's really great. Um, she's done some other stuff. There was a TV show, uh, V Visitor or something like that she did. She was in Deadpool. Uh, yep. I've seen I've this that. woman's breasts. They're I'm great. jealous. I feel like I should watch Deadpool just for that yeah. alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just watch the whole thing on mute. <laughs> Then we have um, Alan Tudyk playing Alan Wash. Uh, I, I love, love Alan, Alan Tudyk. Tudyk. I have loved him ever since A Knight's Tale, which I saw in high school and yes. was thrilled, which is right around the same time, I think it must have Probably been. Probably so, yeah. Which right? I didn't realize until I was taking notes for this, that he's the voice of the robot and I robot. Yep. I think that's fantastic. Oh, I he's love, also the voice of the robot in Rogue One. I didn't, yeah, which yeah. is really exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> ah, I didn't know He that. does a lot of voice work. He's been in... I was going to say he was in Frozen. I didn't know that. He was in Frozen. He was in Zootopia. He was in Zootopia. He was oh. also in um, Wreck-It Ralph. He played yeah. King Candy. He does tons of voice wow, work. Yeah. he does do a lot of work. Good mm-hmm. for him. Yeah. Talented guy. Really, really excellent. Then we have uh, Adam Baldwin playing Jane. <laughs> Jane. To a T. Yeah. Like, seriously. He is so perfect as he Jane. He is so good. <laughs> I can't imagine I could ever take him seriously in real life because of Jane. He's it's like it's it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Perfect casting. Yeah. yeah, it really threw me off when I watched the TV show Chuck after this, which he was in, played uh, uh, somewhat different character. He's still like the manly, like tough sure, guy. yeah. But he was working for like the government. He was a government spy, clean cut, and I was like, oh, <laughs> this is a little Jane, different. Jane, what are you doing? Where's your scruff? <laughs> That's too funny. Um, then we have Jewel Stady uh, playing Kaylee. And again, oh, I met so her in adorable. real life. She's adorable. so adorable. She's so yes. sweet. Really, really tall in real life. She might have been wearing boots. I don't know. I'm very short in real life. She Do you seemed... all remember the show she was in in like the 90s? Flash forward t- with Tucker and Becca. She was Becca. Tucker huh. and Becca. I knew like about it. Or something. I liked it. I don't remember a whole lot about it except that I liked it. And that mm. kid was really good too. The kid who played the boy and he doesn't do any work. She was also bad. in Stargate Atlantis, which I think Adam Baldwin may also have been in. Really? I think yeah. So. Uh, also, some people from Farscape were in that show Claudia Black and uh, John Crichton. I don't remember that actor's name, but the guy who played John Crichton was also Worlds in that. Collide. Now, yeah. I remember her from the Honey I Shrunk the Kids TV show. Do you remember this TV show? <gasps> no. no. I remember it being a lot of fun. I'm sure if I could find it now, I don't think it's released on anything but I'm sure if I could find it now it's horrible probably oh, I bet, you yeah. back on and go oh I like that that's <laughs> hilarious and then we have Sean Mayer as Simon Tam very clean cut very attractive yeah. man I really like him quite a lot he does yeah. a good job mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. He, he does excellent work he really does he he fills the role really well right. mm-hmm. he yeah. was known for I think being in Party of Five before this I don't really know if he was a main character but I think huh. he was a returning character Huh. We have Ron Glass playing Shepherd Book. Again, does a great also, job. I love it. Yeah. yeah. He Shepherd. does really, I think really there are, good. There are people who don't like book too or maybe his well here's or the something. thing i don't know people are wrong about things and everything <laughs> in this show is great uh this is one of those instances joss whedon does this a lot i feel like where joss whedon has like an interest in spirituality particularly christianity but not a lot of like knowledge right. about yeah. it well it's very interesting the way that they do religion in this because you you would assume and it does seem when you first especially when we first meet him and he talks about being at the Abbey and he's got all of these, like like the fruits and the vegetables. There's mm-hmm. something monastic about that yes. anyway. And you would, I would expect a little more of like the Eastern mysticism because of the Alliance to come through on that. Mm-hmm. And with Eastern mysticism, usually you have more of an open-mindedness. Yes. So it was interesting that he was painted as more of like the conservative evangelical, yeah. mm-hmm. especially when he first came on the ship right. and people were saying, 
fine, just don't push your religion on me, which no one right. would ever say to like an Eastern Tibetan monk. Sure, yeah. So that was interesting. That It would be interesting if we were ever, and you know, no spoilers, but I don't think we're ever going to get a whole lot of detail about, I mean, like this is several centuries into the future. It would be interesting, and especially if we have combined the Western and Eastern worlds into this anglo sino yeah. alliance, like what does spirituality look like at this point? Well, How has also, that been affected? Like he has his own Bible, mm-hmm. and I don't remember... If we ever hear readings, we, we the never only hear one I can think scripture. of is that section in Our Mrs. Reynolds, which we'll get to when and we that's get there. Her Bible, which might not be the same as it his may not at be all. the same Bible. <laughs> this is what happens when you get lots of different planets. He I does guess say so. he has some lectures. He says he has lectures. about lepers, <laughs> and lepers and hellfire. hellfire. So that sounds. I mean, like that sounds like the like, Bible. Sounds like the Bible to me. <laughs> it's also the prop Bible that they use is I think a King James Bible. Is a King James? Oh, well, there you go. So. That's good to know. Mm-hmm. He also pops up in Agents of Shield. <laughs> oh. Yep. I think I knew that, but I have yes. forgotten. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then as finally, in Agents of Shield. we have Summer Glau as Summer River Glau. Tam. And you don't get to see the acting chops on this girl in this pilot episode, but you will. I really like Summer Glau. I think she's very yeah. good. You really like Summer Glau, and you really like yeah, Summer Glau. I really like her a lot. I, I still have to be convinced of Summer Glau. That's so totally we'll fine. And I think what, that, again, as we watch it, mm-hmm. I think the thing that bothers me is that she just feels too old for the role. I think that's, mm. what, that, that's and that, what I'm kicking up against. That actually might be a thing. I think that there may be kind of a trend uh, when it comes to Joss Whedon and Little Sisters because they actually, friends of the show Lonnie and Alistair on their uh-huh. Dusted podcast. Where you should be that, listening to. Why, why are you, are you not? Us? Um, <laughs> no, no, they do, do this do, way better. Do listen to us. Um, yes, we're all friends. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna no competition. <laughs> <laughs> only love. To be fair, she was only 20 in this. And normally when you watch a lot of shows. Was they, she only 20? She was only 20. Uh, when they cast like high school people, they're like, here's this 30 year old guy. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, wow. But when they introduced uh, Buffy's no, sister Dawn in Buffy the Vampire Slayer in season five, initially she was only supposed to be like 12 or 11 years old. And they ended up casting Michelle Trachtenberg, who was 15. Yeah. So there's actually been a lot of talk. Um, uh, Lonnie and Alistair have been discussing a lot how uh, depending on who is handling the script work you've got like really poorly written Dawn who's written like a 12 year old yeah. or you have like 50 because there's a huge difference between there 12 is. and 15 there is a there huge is. difference yes. so it's entirely possible how old is River Tam supposed to be uh, let's see she went to Simon says that she went Simon to school says, sorry <laughs> that was funny <laughs> I see what you did there in the episode, Simon explains that she went to the government academy when she was 14 years old, and he got her out two years later. That's um, what I thought, yeah. So she's so supposed she's, to be so like 16, maybe 17, if right. it took her a long time to get like the letters to him yeah. and everything. Okay, then yes, I that's that's the problem that I have with it. She also There's had never like, her a brain moment, fried right. up and stuff. See, so. and that I would have been okay with. And mm-hmm. they've been like, oh, she's 19, but now she has like the mind of a 14-year-old. Mm-hmm. But the idea that they're trying to tell me that she's like 15 or 16, right. mm-hmm. and she's clearly a grown adult woman, is tricky for me. I have mm-hmm. trouble getting past that. We'll just see how you feel as the episodes okay, go we'll on. See, yep, and I, I can get past. Like, I can mm-hmm. enjoy the show, obviously. No, absolutely. But every time, I'm just like, why, why though? Either make her older or cast someone younger. Yeah. So, which says nothing against Summer Glau. No, actually. absolutely not. No, just I like against her a lot. the casting. Yeah. And she actually would go on to get even more acclaim from being in the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Yeah. Right, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah. She was Didn't a Terminator. I, That's I, pretty cool. I only cool. watched a couple episodes. That's mm-hmm. something I've always meant to go back and watch because yeah. I love the Terminator series. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some of my favorite work of hers is actually in the movie Serenity whenever she... And this is funny. I didn't actually see Firefly until I had seen the movie Serenity. I think that's pretty common of a lot of people, though. Yes, because Fox killed it. And it yeah. came on it like a weird, it was like Friday nights or whatever. And people are watching football or whatever it is they do on Friday nights. I don't know. I guess it's high school football. They made a TV show about it. I don't know anything about sports. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yes. All that so say. I saw Serenity first and then didn't watch the TV. In fact, it had been so long since I had seen the movie that I did not realize that the movie and the TV show were like tied together yeah. in any way, shape or form. Yeah. I was actually introduced to the movie first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It had just come out on like DVD or something. And one of my friends at college was like, hey, you got to check out this movie. And I was like, okay. So I watched it and I was like, what was that? And yeah. why did I need to watch it? <laughs> right. Well, I remember being so stoked because it was like, Joss Whedon was doing right. a movie. Oh, and that was like a huge deal yeah. for and I me of, personally. I knew of Buffy and I knew of mm-hmm. Angel and had seen episodes, but I didn't really know who Whedon was mm-hmm. at the time. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So while we're talking about where all these actors ended up, there is a really great show on right now called Con Man, where a lot of them ended up, <laughs> which stars Alan Tudyk and Nathan Fillion basically playing themselves. 
Alan Tudyk is playing a struggling actor who starred as a spaceship pilot on Spectrum, a canceled <laughs> science fiction series that went to become a cl cult classic. <laughs> and his good friend, Nathan Fillion, who was the ship's captain. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> I need to watch this. And them going to cons. That's amazing. <laughs> so wow. It's on season two right now. So I need to watch we that. We have to check that out. Yes. 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 All right. So let's get back into our beat by beat. Time for some thrilling heroics. So we open up, we're on the bridge, everybody has gotten onto the ship, we've gotten away from the Alliance, we open up the cargo to reveal a bunch of metal bricks, these bronze, golden looking right. metal mm -hmm. bricks, um, and while everybody's talking about them, Mal flips one over and we see that they're stamped with a government insignia on right. the back, yeah. and he tells everybody, Bijouet, which is Mandarin for shut up, and then everybody shuts up and he puts it back, and Zoe's like, we got a problem? And he's like, no, probably not, and doesn't tell anybody what it mm -hmm. is he just saw, <laughs> and uh, they hide the cargo away and say that they need to land down on Persephone. They're going to pick up some passengers. Which um, is one of my favorite parts when Kay Kaylee's super excited about picking up passengers and Jane is not. Yeah. And Jane's <laughs> like, you got to like, chill out on this enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And Mal says, I don't believe there's a power in the verse that can keep her from being enthusiastic. And she says, I love my... Yeah. From being cheerful. That's right. And she says, I love my captain. And, and that's all ad-libbed, right? Oh, yeah. Captain. A lot of that is ad-libbed, not in the script. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, mm -hmm. that makes me happy. Yeah. Kaylee is so sweet. She's, She's a delightful character. She is the... I think that I have read before Joss Whedon said that whatever Kaylee is feeling at any given moment is what the audience ought to be yes. feeling in that moment. Oh. Kaylee... Yeah. Kaylee's emotional state serves yep. as an audience. So for those of you going through Firefly for the first time, whatever Kaylee's face is, that should be your face. Right. Yeah, <laughs> she is, as Joss Whedon described, pure of heart, the soul of the ship. And yes. what she says is usually true. So when she tells Mal later that he is a nice man, mm -hmm. it means yeah. he is a nice man, of whether he sees he it or not. Yes, exactly. So then we see Wash and Zoe leaving and having kind of uh, their own little intimate conversation. Yeah. We learn that they're married. I love um, that camera angle. Too I love it's that intimate camera scene. angle so much. The camera angle stays in the hallway while these two go up the steps yeah. and are like up in the bridge mm -hmm. area talking. And yeah. it's like we don't get to like fully be a part of that. No, it's a voice yeah. like, like peeking in. Yes, the yes. Scene. We're like, yeah, the, you you nailed it on the head. Yes, exactly right. And then in comes Mal, the third member of this happily married couple. Uh huh. Uh huh. That'll come up later. <laughs> yeah. Well, it came up right then. Don't forget to yeah, call him sir. Up, he, likes he likes that. that. come up a little bit more later. Yeah. <laughs> to a, a more violent degree. So Mal pops in. He's asking about, you know, uh, is the ambassador back yet? And then we hear uh, Nara's name for the first time. That's right. And uh, Wash is saying, well, I can call her back early if we're on a time crunch. And Mal says, no, don't do that. Somebody on here is going to do honest work. And then we do the patented Joss Whedon irony cut into yes. in medias coitus. Yep. With Anara and a nameless young man. Which, again, perfect camera work. Excellent camera At work. the point of orgasm, the camera blurs. Yep. Genius. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah it's nice. genius. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's really great. And then we cut to them sitting on cushions, and they're talking, and they're chatting, and having a grand old time, and then he just is the worst. Again, it's very interesting how how Joss has done the character of Inara here because it, it, it this is very much more so a call to the Asian, a call back to the Asian sensibility of like a geisha mm -hmm. right, where exactly. it's the art of conversation and of, uh, well, she's called a companion of yeah. companionship. Mm -hmm. And you see the art of seduction too. Like mm -hmm. she, it is an art form for her. She thinks very clearly about every word that she uses. She talks a little bit about her past, about how she wanted to see the universe. And mm -hmm. she's really, uh, I mean, it is a part that she's playing. It's a part that she's playing. Oh, absolutely. I, she went, uh, what, what do they call it? Um, training at the academy, right? Yes. right? Yeah, so she was trained for a long time on, on how to do this well. And you can see how much pride she takes in her work, mm -hmm. really. And she's very flattered when he goes to leave and he's like, my father's very influential. I could arrange for right. her, you trying know, to get her to this. stay. Yes. It was mm -hmm. very nice. It was nicer than I thought it would be. It was very nice. And she says, the time passed too quickly. And of course, then he has that awful <laughs> line. Uh, uh, that. Well, your clock's probably rigged to speed up and cheat us out of our fun. That immature boy joke. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. An he's immature so, boy oh, joke. Oh, man. And well, it's just what's lovely is that you see the same look on Inara's face as you saw on Mal's when Zoe said, so we won. Just the romance is gone. Yes. The romance is out of it. Just like, these are two characters. Ugh, these two are perfect for each who other. Who are perfect for one another. These are two characters who are romantic idealists 
who are in this very dystopian setting just doing the best that they can. And I really, I really like it. It speaks to me. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I feel like I'm a downer. No, but, no, no. Know, I mean, it's kind of a downer notes. moment. It is. It is. Yeah. So you're going to see Inara taking off in her ship to meet back up with the Firefly at that point. And when you do, if you look closely, you'll see a Star Wars Imperial shuttle taking off. No the way. The same one seen in episode six, Return of the Jedi. Well, huh. I'll be darned. Yeah, it's a little Easter egg they threw in there for us. That's fun. <laughs> so this is when we meet Badger, right? Played by Mark Shepard. I love Mark Shepard. I love Mark Shepard, too. If you don't know who Mark Shepard is, I... He's fantastic. He's in an episode of Doctor Who, even. He's yeah. He's in an episode of Doctor Which, Who. He's you know, in uh, a lot of Supernatural. He's yeah. in X Files. He's in X Files. Uh, he's great. He just does he's great fantastic. work. Yeah, he does he's great really work. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. Um, and excellent here as Badger, just the greasy little slime ball of a guy who gave the crew their job, mm-hmm. and now found out that there is this uh, APB, basically, Uh about a Firefly-class ship with stolen goods. And this is whenever we see that really neat prop work of Badger holding up the sheet that's the Mm -hmm. newsreel. And it's like like wizard newspaper. Speaking of prop work in this episode, did you guys notice that... that Badger had the apple the peeler, apple peeler yes. the old yeah. and then, which at first yeah. I was like, "Oh, that's neat, this little hand crank, you know, just mm-hmm. just a funny little thing." But then it occurred to me that fresh fruit and vegetables are so rare that yeah. this is like yeah. a luxury commodity yeah. item yes, that he definitely. has. Like mm-hmm. this is a huge status symbol. Yep. I thought that was really neat. Did you know that originally that role was going to be played by Joss Whedon? No way. <laughs> he, he wrote that role that. for himself. And when Mark Shepard found out that halfway through playing the character, he got real nervous and started forgetting his lines, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he had one line he struggled with when sitting at the desk, I guess, after that. <laughs> I can totally see that happening, Oh, that's actually. darling. Yeah, no, yes. absolutely. Yeah. We see, um, we see Badger being a bully. We see Mal backing down. And then as they're leaving, uh, uh, Jane First has- of all, Mal has an excellent cowboy swagger in this whole scene. Yeah, he especially does. when they first walk in and swagger. they get accused oh, of yeah. being Oh, yeah, late. you're late. And he's like, nope. You're lying. <laughs> Not you, making you're that. You're lying. <laughs> mm. You that. know, for a fact, we landed two hours before we went to. Yeah, yep. all that. But no, you're exactly right. Mal knows when to hold his cards. He and does. he's not going yes. to go off on Badger, who has all the guns and has right. all the control of the yeah. situation. Mm-hmm. He's very smart. Yes. So that we leave there. Um, Jane is whining and complaining about it. You know, 10% Naturally. of nothing is still nothing. Right. Carry the nothing. Carry the nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. I I love Jane very, very yeah, much. He's pretty I, lovable. Yes. Your mouth is running. You might want to look at that. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Which we didn't touch on when they first landed because this actually splits the scene a little Mm -hmm. bit. We actually get to meet book and Mm -hmm. he's walking and looking at ships and someone approaches him and keeps going, Hey grandpa. Hey grandpa. Hey grandpa. What's your desk? Grandpa. That that guy is so abrasive and I don't like him at all. Yeah, no, (laughs) it's terrible. Why would you fly with him? Yeah, no, absolutely not. Mm -mm. Uh, Just before that happened, actually, I should point this out that Kaylee tells the captain that they need a new compression coil for the steamer. And cap says, well, we can't, do that right now. We Hopefully it doesn't it. fall yeah. apart, which it will later in episode eight. That's the part that breaks. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, told and him. actually in episode two, I had forgotten this until I was looking at stuff online. Uh, in episode two that she brings up again, she's like, hey, we still need that compression coil. <laughs> <laughs> but nope, that's the part that breaks in episode eight. And another fun quick note in the movie Serenity, they find one laying on the ground and you see her face light up as she picks it up <laughs> as they're cleaning. She's like, oh, I need one of these. That's amazing. That amazing. And now so my keeps favorite back running up. joke. Yep. I love that kind of thing. Book doesn't want to travel with the guy calling him grandpa. He's no. like, I never married. <laughs> it's, I love that joke. It's yep. so funny. Yeah. What? what? I, never I never married. married. I can't I'm be not a grandpa. grandfather. <laughs> but he meets Kaylee and Kaylee will make the same joke. But those two people connect. Yes. And Kaylee gets him. And Kaylee says, you're not looking at where you're going. You're looking at the ships. Mm -hmm. Mine's the nicest. Mine. Mm -hmm. How you get there is the worthier part. Exactly. That is excellent, Mm -hmm. excellent line. That's really wonderful life life advice. Yes. And then one of my favorite moments right after this is whenever Kaylee says, uh, you know, we can get you anywhere you're going as long as you can pay. And then like she tucks her hand behind her. You can pay, right? You can pay, right? And I'm just like, (laughs) Kaylee doesn't like asking people about money. And I get you, girl. I don't like doing that either. (laughs) I love her outfit, too. Beautiful. It's so darling. Of the Western and Eastern. Mm-hmm. Yes. And she's Sarah, still got you need like, that for cons, and then I can wear I my do. Inara dress, and then Vinton, you can be Captain Tight Pants, and it'll yes. all work out beautifully. <laughs> it'll be perfect. I always struggle with this because obviously 
Sarah, you are Kaylee, and obviously, oh, you. Liz, you are Nara. Right. I feel like I'm some kind of mixture between Wash, Mal, and Book. You can <laughs> be whoever you, you want can be whoever to be. You want to be. That's the fun true. Part. It's yeah. true. Like, we just have happen to Jane be hat. like those two. Yes. <laughs> but you do have a Jane hat, and Jane would be really fun but to I play. But I do like Mal a lot. Mm-hmm. But I yeah, I think you just pick somebody to be. I think that, that, that picking yeah. Mal would probably be uh, the way to go. I if get, it were me. I can get moody, guys. That's right. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so then we uh, finally get our passengers, and finally we get the rest of the crew coming back onto the ship, yeah. and we see uh, Dobson. We see a Mr. Simon Tam, very with nicely dressed with his red glasses. Yes, red glasses. Right? <laughs> As they're still walking toward the ship, this is the first time we're going to see the blue sun signs, which is the sign yes, for Yes, they're sprinkled everywhere. Yeah, they're I was sprinkled looking for them. This because in this oh. first episode, they actually try to put in a lot that's going to mm-hmm. go later, yeah. and most of it didn't, they didn't have a chance to do, mm-hmm. including the Blue Sun Corporation. They didn't have much of a time to look into that, but it was going to be the super shady conspiratorial thing that was going to play into oh, the storyline. Oh, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Two by two hands of blue. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Yep, so you do see the blue sun signs everywhere, so mm-hmm. keep an eye out for that if this is your first uh, watch of the series. We get everybody onto the ship. As they're introducing this scene, I hadn't noticed this until I listened to the commentary and they pointed this out. The camera goes over the ship first before they go in to show them talking. Mm -hmm. And when it does, you can look in the windows and see them standing in the ship. That's neat. They actually added them in to the ship. That is cool. (laughs) That's really cool. Yeah, I missed it. And of course, that's when Mal finds out that Book's a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's like... Oh, you're a shepherd. Is that gonna be a problem? And then Kaylee has to assure everyone, that's not a problem. Guys, that's, that's not, not a problem. problem. Everything's, totally fine fine. Everything's, Everything's fine here. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. We're all happy. <laughs> She's Poor uh, Kaylee. what is she? A two on that uh, Ingram scale uh, or whatever? Oh yeah, Enneagram, probably so. Yeah. <laughs> Kaylee oh, just dear. wants she's just gonna hide all her negative feelings. That's what everybody yeah. to get along. <laughs> and then of course, Zoe sh- says that she's worried that people are going to find their hidden cargo. And right. So if they do, shoot them. Shoot them politely. Politely. <laughs> <laughs> it's a so great then, line. So then we get to the part where um, Mal introduces Book to Inara. And this is yeah. one of my favorite parts. Yeah. Um, like, aside from Mal being a total jerk, Inara and Kaylee's relationship is one of my very favorite things on television. Yeah. It is one of my really very special. favorite relationships in all of TV and film. I love the friendship. The very, And I mean, uh, minor spoiler, but not really... Later, we will see that Inara does occasionally take on female clients, right. and it's like uh-huh. just not a big deal. I mean, it's just whatever. So even though like Inara can do that, there's no, there isn't. It's not a sexual relationship between Kaylee and Inara. Like it's a very platonic right. sisterly right. friend relationship, and there's not enough of that between women on TV. And for this to be happening in 2002, it was really nice yeah. and really refreshing. And I love when Inara is coming down the stairs and looks over and sees Kaylee, and is just like, "Hey, you!" And Kaylee back to her, she's like, "Hey, you!" Like I yep. love that yeah. so much. Especially because you and I are in our and Kaylee's. And it's just, it fills me with joy and gladness. Yes, joy and gladness abounds. So at this point, you have Kaylee showing us what was in the box that Shepard Book gave her. Yes. As payment. Uh huh. It's strawberry. a strawberry. And Joss Whedon has said, when someone asked him what this show was about, he said, it's about a strawberry. Yeah, the way she eats that strawberry. It's a very sexy way to eat a strawberry. Right? Absolutely. I like eat that. all my strawberries that way. What I know you do. About? It's very distracting. <laughs> <laughs> it just sets up the show, like how rare some things are. Right, exactly. So then we cut into the dining room scene where they're all having dinner together and we see all of this fresh fruit and yeah. all these fresh veggies. And just like what we were saying earlier, like what a rarity. That I mean, like mm-hmm. you're in space for weeks at a time. They yeah. even say that it's been weeks since we had a job and all this other stuff. Yeah. And I mean, like you get your protein slushes in all the colors of the rainbow is yep. what Mal says. Mm-hmm. Um and so they all get to sit down like as a family and get to yeah. start to meet one another and, and get to know each other. And there is a sense of conviviality of yes. a family meal. Yeah, mm-hmm. it definitely gives that family feeling that Joss Whedon wants in his yeah. show. Exactly, yes. And it's creating that family. And I love the warm lighting here and everything yes. looks a bit dirty. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's not what you expect from a sci-fi show where things usually look clean and white and silver. Right, yeah. <gasps> it's mm-hmm. the burrow in space. It is the yeah. burrow in space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And you get that line from book, mind if I say grace? Only, Only if you say, say it out, out loud. loud. Which sets up Mal's religious convictions at this yes. point. Yes, exactly. It sure does. Um, and I think that it's really funny that you, like we see Book like lower his head and like start to pray, and then you see Jane right next to him just be like, oh, uh, and then like yeah, also kind of like yeah, yeah, everyone else starts lowering their heads, and Mal's just like, nope. <laughs> you don't I'm get to see no. Zoe, so I don't know if Zoe did or not, but everyone else, I think you get to see lower their heads and join them. Man, I feel like if Zoe saw that Mal didn't, that she wouldn't. Yeah, I feel like she'd like close her eyes but not bow her head. She'd mm. go half and half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we won't get into it all this time. We'll wait, but. I 
I have a lot to say about Zoe and Wash and Mal. And I might be skipping ahead from what if you guys want to talk about this, but when Jane has to leave the table for no, his No, that's comments. what I want to talk about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is, I had forgotten just how bad this line was. But so <laughs> yes. we have Kaylee talking with Simon and like, you know, getting to know him, maybe flirting just a little bit. I mean, like, here's this pretty handsome man, whatever. Right. And talking about him being a doctor. And then Jane's utterly crude, terrible, yeah. horrible line. Which is mostly intact in the script but that last part that's really gross <laughs> no. oh, oh no oh, the, oh, oh the, the looped, looped up, up part. part yeah no that's yeah. really disgusting that isn't in the script so I don't oh, know if he ad libbed it or if someone else wrote it like on the day or what that was yeah. but that's not in the script it's bad yeah no you're exactly worst right part for me I love the way Mal I handles lo- it yes yes he me too. wins my heart in that scene he's such a complicated character because we just had him being really a jerk very disrespectful to Inara yeah and then here he is defending honor and virtue and it's really strange and you, it is odd I don't know if it's just because it is Kaylee and because she's basically everybody's kid sister even though I mean like she I mean she's probably the youngest on the crew but maybe only by like five years right. I mean yeah. well you also learn later in a, in a later episode that it's not that he was being trying to be mean to Inara he talks bad about her profession but he would never talk bad about her is the way he puts it that's later. right we do see that in shindig yeah where, and i don't know it's con- and we'll get there when we get there own yeah. sure. it's, it's a whole other story so we'll have to right. go that way again flawed character is all i'm saying an interesting character i love that he defends kaylee of course i love that he sends jane away from the table and that jane asks no questions that there's yep. no doubt over who is in command of the mm-hmm. ship that's right it's great. he knows where the, he knows about the chain of command <laughs> it's a chain i go get and beat you with <laughs> so you know who's in Brutton Command. Very, very true. Yeah. And but, I love Simon's line of, what do you pay him for? In hmm? <laughs> On the ship. <laughs> public relations. <laughs> Big old bite of tomato. It's pretty great. Which yeah. he's eating with chopsticks, which I love. Yes. I They're love all using that. chopsticks. I love the like, rustic that bowls, like yes. the very Western looking mm-hmm. like bowls. Uh-huh. With yep. And then the chopsticks. Asian chopsticks. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It's great. Yeah. Cut to the sponge bath scene. You want to talk to us about guess? this? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> which... Is Inara, I would always take this as her washing away the day, washing away the insults. Yes. She had this yep. younger man insult her. She had Mal yep. insult her. She's just letting it wash off her, run off her. It's like a figurative thing there to me. Yeah. That's a really good point. I do like that. Well, and it, it's, you know, self-care, as I'm learning about. I, that was a note that I took, is yeah. that Inara is very good at self-care. Yes. And we could all learn from Inara about some, you know what? Maybe we all should give ourselves a cleansing sponge bath at the end of the day. <laughs> I like it. Treat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and there's also a real sense of uh, empowerment and rebellion in the way that w- when Book enters just a couple minutes later, or a couple of moments later, I should say, and she does not cover up initially. When not he immediately, comes in. no. She, she takes does. Some time. Yeah, she takes her time and she does it of her own accord. She covers up when she's ready to cover up, not to. Not for not his sense, yeah. Not yeah. for his sensibilities, or not for like his sense of chastity or anything. Yes. Yeah. But just because, like, you don't want to have a conversation with your breasts hanging out. Well, guess. because she was done. Yeah. She was done bathing out. Oh, okay. She was standing yeah. up, and mm-hmm. I'm, and that was it. I think mm-hmm. that she put it on at the same time that she would have had he not come in the room at all. Mm-hmm. And I like that. And I love this expectation getting flipped here, where she says, "Are you here to lecture me?" And he mm-hmm. says. No, I came to bring you dinner, but if you yep. prefer a lecture, I have many yeah. on leprosy and hellfire. And mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. You get to see there that he's not this righteous, upright, religious man who's going to judge everybody. Yeah. He's going to be a part of this family. Yeah. Again, I think he was just put on his back foot mm-hmm. before. Right. I really don't think that he intended to assert... React the way that he did. Yeah. yeah. And I think they were both embarrassed mm-hmm. by yes. Mal. Yes. Mal humiliated both of them mm-hmm. and he mocked both of them equally yes. in that scene. And this was them saying, you know, whatever's going on with Captain Mal and whatever he thinks of me, whatever he thinks of you, mm-hmm. you and I we can have a relationship outside of that and Mm -hmm. we can come to some kind of equanimity, which I really like. Yeah. Especially because companions are held in such high regard in this society. I mean, like we, when we get to the episode Shindig, we'll see, I mean, there are going to be several companions in attendance at that party. And I mean, all of them are fancy, well-dressed, well-put-together women. 
And yeah, it's, I mean, it's exactly, I mean, it is, it is that idea of a geisha from, from yes. Eastern culture and all of this. And so, yeah, it was, it was really cool to be able to see book come in and like talk with her and they have this conversation and it mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, it didn't have to be judgmental on either side. On really. either side. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And I like that when they talk about the captain, you can tell that she has this appreciation and this friendship with Mal even though that they say those things, she says, I've said worse about him. Yes. And then she says, he's complex. And it cuts immediately to him peeing. Yes. Which is a weird cut. That is a weird cut, right? <laughs> he's a he complex says, man. It's yeah. because, okay. Well, <laughs> why is he such a mystery? No, yeah, she or, asks yeah. Book, why are you so fascinated by him? And Book says, because he's a mystery. Why are you? And she goes, because so few men are. And which then cuts him out another peeing. Great. Yes. <laughs> it's another great line. This is another one of the, Joss Whedon loves him an irony cut. It happens yeah. in Buffy all the time, yep. where they'll be like everything's gonna be fine and I'm sure that everything's a-okay and then you cut to demons running amok right. and everything's yeah. on fire one of my like, favorites is still coming up later in the show yes mm-hmm. <laughs> well and I wonder too if this if this doesn't say a little something about both of their characters too that that they do romanticize each other does that make sense that like Inara romanticizes Mal and Mal romanticizes Inara yes yeah. uh huh and speaking of Mal's room which it cuts to you get your first idea of what the rooms look like mm-hmm. aside They're from very Inara's. little I really like that it has like the curvature at the bottom. It's yes. like they're in a submarine. It's not oh, an yeah. actual just room they built on the set. They mm-hmm. built it to look like it's a part of that ship. Yeah. And you have to climb up the ladder to get out. Mm-hmm. It's and perfect. how Inara's shuttle looks so different. Yes. yes. Like I the inside love of a genie's that. bottle. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So I've, cushiony. I want that pillows as a master suite. Pillows everywhere. Amazing. All yeah. the pillows, all the One big cuddle and puddle. tassels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One big cuddle puddle. Well, you need it in that line of work. Uh-huh. <laughs> So we do cut to Mal, um, and he gets uh, uh, Wash tells him that somebody sent a message to the central cortex, and they right. have, they have a mole on the ship. They find out, and so um, we have in succession three fake outs pretty immediately because Mal runs to yeah, the, it's really fun. Yeah, it's actually, really there's quick. a lot of misdirection. Yes, and it's yes, really yes. Quick. Um, I was going to ask you guys, like, so does the, uh, okay, so what happens is Mal runs into the um, the hangar, and we see Simon there. Mal punches Simon, and he's all like, you sent the message, blah, 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 fighting Simon, and then Book steps out, and he's like, actually, you've got the wrong man, Captain, and then the camera pans, and we see Dobson. How right. did the misdirection work for you guys? I I first thought it was going to be Book. As soon as he said that, I was like, oh, Book's the mole? And uh-huh. then the camera turns. I'm like, oh, oh no, okay, okay, <laughs> oh good. Because <laughs> we've spent this entire time making Dobson out to be like yeah. this bumbling. Well, affable and then there's dude. one more too. There, yes. There's one more misdirection too when, when Dobson says uh, that he's after Simon, and you're just like, you're right. Yeah, what yeah. is right. happening? Exactly. Mal himself just is keep... like, oh no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's like, what is it? So yeah, the relief is there a on his face <laughs> as he says that. It's so great. And uh, listening to the commentary, I was really interested in Whedon particularly chose Mal's words when he realizes that he's not going to get a reward and the Fed isn't even going to be nice to him. He says, well, this has an effect on the landscape. And his choice of using the word landscape there Hmm. to describe a situation rather than, you know, an actual landscape gives it that space of action and... It gives it that Western feeling, and he really wanted to use that word, and it had a lot behind it. I really like that someone chooses words that particular. Yeah, yeah. Joss Whedon is an amazing writer. He, I mean, he is one of my favorite writers. Mm-hmm. He, his control over dialogue in particular is absolutely phenomenal, and I love it. It's one of my favorite things. We're now into Act Three, finally of this episode. We are taking a lot of time, but that's okay. It's okay. This is a two-hour episode. It's, it's our true. first yes. opening episode. It was mm-hmm. always going to be longer. Yeah. yeah. So everything gets super duper tense here in the hangar, super duper fast, and Kaylee gets shot. Yeah. I forgot, you guys. Did you really? I <sighs> forgot, and I wrote, he shot Kaylee. Right? I did. Mother right. Rudder. Right. Mother Rudder. And it's at yep. that point that I love that it's Shepard Book who takes control of the situation and attacks. It's like he's a man of action. Yes. Yeah, he is stepping he is a right man in. Of action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's interesting. And I also like that you see that Jane, while he is the jock and will say all these things just because he doesn't think before mm-hmm. he speaks, does love Kaylee and doesn't want her yeah. to get hurt because he yeah. wants to kill that man. Oh yeah, absolutely. He is so angry. He's that this just so happened. mad. He's Everybody the, he is, is the protective so mad. Yes. older brother. Yeah, yeah. and situation. then you see again. Um, I love Anara's reaction whenever she, uh, you know, she cries out and is running over to Kaylee. She's like pulling off of um, like her her kimono basically and like yeah. bundles that up under Kaylee's head. And Simon even runs over there because he is a doctor and all this. Yes. And um, so we have this entire conversation. Um, and uh, then Simon stands up and he's like, "If you want me to help her, then you can't. You need to run." 
run. You need to run from the yeah. feds because the Alliance has now shown up outside in their own ship. And everyone's appalled. And then it is, it seems like it's going to be a standstill until Anara stands up and is telling Mal, turn this ship around. And Mal wants to fight with her and is like, you never tell me what to do on my, and then Kaylee cries out. And it's like, okay, we don't have, immediately, change course. immediately yep. change course. Yeah, yes. He doesn't even, doesn't even like saying, just, just change course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I, we skipped one line I really like when Kaylee's on the ground and, he, and Simon says, can you move your feet? And she goes, are you asking me to dance? She's, <laughs> so She's the best. She's the best. She is the so best. Much. But yeah. yes. Everybody's so mad. <laughs> yes. That ain't nothing but a little oh, mosquito bite. Mal, Big mosquito. <laughs> Mal orders them to change course immediately. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another great character moment yes. there. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mal. So at this point you we hurt see me them. So good. <laughs> we, <laughs> <laughs> at this point we see them in the med bay. Yes. And Simon's working, and you have Mal and Anara both in there with Kaylee, mm-hmm. and you get to see both of them look at each other, and the camera shows it just in yes. such a way. Oh, I love this shot. Neither so of them much. notice that they're looking at each other. One looks at the other and then looks away, and then the other one looks up at the other and then looks away. Like yes. this, this lovingly look. If Mm -hmm. they had just seen each other, everything would have been fine and they would have been in love and everything would have been different. And it would have been fine. But no, no. Uh, They take just too little, too late. Mal and Inara. (laughs) Uh, Which uh, that should be probably my favorite part of that scene. But it's not because Jane is outside crouching, looking down the window. And it makes me want to tear up. Like every time I see it, I'm like, oh, Jane, Mm -hmm. he's so sad. He's like looking through that window like, please, please, please. Mm -hmm. So concerned. (laughs) Oh, man. It's really interesting. I was watching this with Nathan earlier um, and he was like, see, it's really weird because... Because you've got Jane having all these feelings, but then, you know, he also is constantly acting like he's going to turn against the crew or whatever. And I'm like, I think that Jane is a man who always lives in the exact moment. Like, whatever is happening <laughs> I in like that. that instance, yeah. that yeah. is where Jane is at. <laughs> I think he's a man who denies his feelings. And Possibly want, also that. He he's, he's wants to be the big tough guy who only wants mm-hmm. the money. He's also kind of dumb. there's something in there that's sweeter. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. I do he's like that. Dumb. Yeah. <laughs> So then we get to the climax of this first half of this episode where Mal finally decides that he's like done with all this crap and starts heading for the cargo bay yes. and Simon is chasing after him. Uh, Mal goes over, busts open the big blue box. <laughs> Bust open is the word because when filming this, Nathan Fillion broke that big blue box. <laughs> did he really? Out. He did. <laughs> I don't know if it was in the scene that actually got filmed. I don't think it was, but mm-hmm. one of the takes, he broke the box and they had to come in and like Whoops. do some things to get it fixed. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. So uh, Mal breaks the box. Nathan Fillion breaks open the box. And inside is a naked girl. Hmm. And he says what we're all thinking. (laughs) Huh. Huh. Cut the commercial. It's a great line. Yep. Yep. It is a great line. Yes. Uh, I do like as they come back from commercial and you have River naked in the box and she's getting up. And this was actually the first scene she shot. Yes. Uh, Mm -hmm. So she had to deal with Mm -hmm. being naked in front of this whole crew and she Now is she just... really naked or was she wearing like a nude body I'm sure suit? she was wearing something but it probably was just like some kind of pasty or something. It might have been did pasty. specifically say she was naked okay. but that might just be you know just the nipples were covered sure. something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. not 100% sure, but she said everyone around her just like applauded, was so warm. It was a really great Aww. first thing to shoot. She said it really opened that, up. Okay, that's one of the things about this show. We didn't talk about this at all whenever we were talking about the cast and crew, but they, everyone talks so lovingly yes. about this yes. show and yeah. about being on this show. And they actually built big sections of Serenity. Like, I don't think the entire set, like the entire it's, ship and its Serenity. It's, it's the entire top floor is mm-hmm. one set and the entire bottom floor is a whole nother set on yes. a different place. And the actors, whenever they weren't like on set doing shoots, would be hanging out on set like yeah. with each other. Yeah, like because yeah. they were afraid they were going to miss something. They, yeah. they were like, no, it's, I'm going to miss some fun. I got to yes. hang out. So they just wanted to hang out together. I mean, they really were a family. And I really do think that you that that comes through. It on, translates on these shows. so it does. so yes. clearly. Well, the the cast of Black Sails is the same way. Oh, really? And that's something that Daphne and I notice when we do our Fathoms Deep podcast mm-hmm. on Black Sails is that at, as we see these interviews, and now that she's got to meet some of the actors and the mm-hmm. creators of the show, they're so proud of the thing that they've built and and of the family that they've created yeah. within it that you, it comes out in the performances. This Absolutely. sense of uh, uh, of intimacy, of yeah. that familial conviviality that we were mm-hmm. talking about around the dinner table. Like, it comes through right. the whole show. Exactly, yeah. Um, there apparently was a joke that would go around on set. At one point, um, Summer Glau flubbed a really important line. And, like, she just she couldn't remember the line or she messed it up or something. And so everybody yelled, Summer! 
And <laughs> so from that point yep. on, anytime someone messed up a line, everybody would yell summer. <laughs> <laughs> they still do it at conventions when stuff happens. I, I was listening oh. to a convention talk the other day and something happened and uh, one of them just went, summer! <laughs> and everyone started laughing. It was great. That's so exciting. It's oh, really man. sweet and cute. Yeah. So we come back from commercial and Summer Glau is giving this really excellent, crazy person performance yes. while she's naked in front of this entire cast and crew. And I really like that you have this girl completely naked in this box and they're getting up naked and she's not sexualized here. No, not at all. How not rare at is that? All. You're not right. Not in any That's way, shape, or point. form. Mm-mm. That's a good point. You're yeah. absolutely Kudos. right. And she's definitely beautiful enough to have been sexualized. Oh, yes. sure. Yeah. Wow. That mm-hmm. is great. Um, and then we see Simon get up close to her and uh, they recognize each other and all of this. And then we cut again to the dining room and Simon begins explaining what is going on. He explains how smart he is. He explains how smart River is, um, talks about the government academy that she was sent mm-hmm. to and then got all these letters from her and then got nothing and then got a letter that made no sense. Yeah. They're hurting us. Get me out. So Sean does an excellent performance right here. Yes. Well, and I think too, it starts when we first see him hug mm-hmm. um, River, River and yeah. say, "No, I'm here. I, I'm I'm right here." Yeah, and because the insinuation there that Mal puts forth is this is some kind of prostitute sex right, slave woman, right? Right, sex yeah. slavery. But at that moment, the whole crew knows what's going on as he embraces Everyone her. And like, can oh, see. this is not. This what we is thought that very different. Yes, yeah. There's mm-hmm. a kind of tenderness and so much vulnerability. Like yes. they are both so vulnerable mm-hmm. in that moment. And then when he's when he's telling the story and he's got kind of the faraway look in his eye, even it's yeah. it's wonderful. Work. It's really yeah. lovely. This is something Joss Whedon specifically wrote was having this brother taking care of a sister rather than a parent figure giving up their life for a child, like yeah. you usually see in yeah. stories. He wanted that to be a brother giving up his life, giving up his medical schooling and mm-hmm. all of this that he could have done to yeah. protect his sister and to just give up everything to fight for her. Yeah, that is great. Well, and I like that it's not. A lot of times we see that with the sister, with the female will take on this like maternal oh, right. role. Yeah. Right. But to see that in the brother instead is a nice gender swap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So really excellent scene there. So we get to, we just get, we finally figure out, you know, what it is that um, Simon is wanted for, why he's wanted by the feds. River yes. also is wanted by the feds. Simon questions Mal's character. He don't take kindly to that and punches him in the face. <laughs> That's two punches, right? That, yeah. Yep. Two punches yep. for Simon. Simon punch keeps now. getting Simon. punched in the face. Yeah. yeah. He, yep. He's actually pretty resilient about that. Like, he he, he's pretty tough. Definitely. For a, you know, fancy pants doctor. Yeah. And that takes us to the interrogation scene with Jane <laughs> and Dobson. <laughs> Which is a great scene. It's a lot of fun. It is. I don't want to hurt you, Lawrence. <laughs> I ain't going to kill you, Lawrence. Yeah. I really like when Mal's like, listen, you don't have to hurt him. He's like, you just have to scare him. Pain is scary. Pain is scary. <laughs> Which Josh Whedon points out, the joy of Jane is that he just says what everyone else is thinking but doesn't want to say sometimes. And that's why he's the funniest, usually. Yeah. And in that moment when he's interrogating Dobson, and Dobson clearly doesn't know how to deal with an interrogation, which Jane says, and he says, okay, I can see you're not an idiot. And Jane says, I wish I could say the same, Lawrence, but this is disappointing as hell. <laughs> One of my favorite lines of the show. I, there's too many to pick, but one of my I favorites. Know. Right there. It's so good. It is it's good. So, You're right. So the dialogue good. in the show is priceless. So the interrogation scene is pretty short and cut off by another ship having arrived. Yes, that's right. These are Reavers. Oof. And we don't get a chance to really know what they are. We just know that something horrible is happening. There's something bad. We see the ship. Mm-hmm. And this is where usually we go to commercial break. And Joss Whedon wanted there to be a second to breathe before commercial just popped on after mm-hmm. this oh, uh-huh. dark thing happening. The problem is at Fox, when you have a show and you put up a black screen, it tells their computers to go to commercial automatically. Oh. So he had to put up a color that was super close to black, but not quite, that wouldn't trigger the commercial. So you could have two or three seconds of black silence and then commercials. Huh. So you'll That's notice really that when you're watching yeah. it has that black box for just a minute. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is interesting. He is so good. Yeah. He's, it's very, very thoughtful. And we glossed over it, but I would like to go back to one of my favorite lines, which is when Mal says, the way it is is the way it is. We got to deal with what's in front of us. Yep. Because, yeah, that's basically... That's, he, that's it. That, that's yeah, life. that's that's life. That's how yes. it rolls. Well, and I always just say, you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you got to deal with what's in front of you. I really yeah. like that. I like the way he thinks. Yeah. And speaking of lines that set things up like that and tell you about characters, the only thing we know about the Reavers before the commercial break is Wash saying, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And it goes to commercial. Can I tell you something, y'all? Yeah. 
I do not care about Reavers. Yeah? Do not care. <laughs> don't care. Now you know. They just don't do anything for you? Like, no, as far as the I story just, goes? there's, you know, I think that everything that we have with the Alliance mm-hmm. and with River and Simon and this haunting it past, there's, we have so much great meat mm-hmm. that I just don't care about the Reavers. They just don't feel like yeah. a real threat to me. And then when they are there, it feels almost. I don't know if cartoonish is the right word, but they're, I mean, like they, they really kick up the, the music, like to make everything super scary, tense. Yeah. yeah. Scary mm-hmm. and tense. And I, to me, it just feels like it's pulling me away from the part of the show that I care about. Like mm-hmm. I just found out about, you know, this girl and how the Alliance has like messed with her brain. And yeah. there are all these things I'm excited about, whether or not patience is going to shoot Mal, I think is interesting. <laughs> Do not care about the Reavers. Mm-hmm. Do not care. I can understand why we need to at least introduce them, though, because the con and like we will talk more about like what the Reavers are and the concept of them when we get um, a couple of episodes in uh, right. to bushwhacked. I think because the concept of and I I really don't want to get into this, but I do just want to say that the concept of the Reavers is really interesting and I think a really cool bit of world building. But I can see what you're saying that it's like it's a lot going on like in this pilot when we've yeah. already got you know Kaylee just got shot. We've got Simon and River. Is Patience going to shoot Mal? Right. Yeah. What are we going to do with Lawrence the Fed? Yeah. What's going to happen? I mean, like, you it's know, It's one of those things stuff. where they're trying to foreshadow something yeah. so that they can come back to it later and they're trying to shove it all into the pilot. And yes. maybe they could have waited till another episode to do Probably that. so, right. yeah. I do think it's set up pretty well, though, when Zoe and Simon are talking and Simon doesn't really know what Reavers are fully. And Zoe says, they'll take the ship, they'll rape us to death, eat our flesh and sew our skins in their clothing. And if we're very, very lucky, they'll do it in that order. And it is that a is a horrifying. It's and, a and, creepy and line. And as she's like, reading that, like, it shows everyone else and what they're doing. It shows Jane solemnly getting his guns ready. It shows mm-hmm. Anara with some kind of box that a lot of people have assumed is a suicide kit. And That's it's what not. I, it's not. It's not a suicide kit. Do you actually know what it is? I do. Know? Yeah, but I don't remember it. In- Joss Whedon said he wasn't going to tell us, but I think oh, it, came up oh. it did come up later. Is it no, the vial that kills anyone she has sex with. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So what was supposed to happen is this is like so and and this is no spoiler because it never comes up again in the show uh-huh. um, and you can find this out if you like read some articles online. Um, it was one of the things that was supposed to come up. Later it was supposed and to come up and then chance. it never did. Yeah. So a lot of people assumed that it was a box that was going to uh, that she would use to commit suicide if the Reavers were to board the ship, which made perfect sense and was totally yeah. fine. And that's why Joss Whedon well. never corrected anybody, right? Because it made sense for that to be the case. What it actually is is apparently companions have this drug that they can inject themselves with and it will somehow kill anybody who has sex with her or him. There's probably male companions, which frankly is way weirder it's than just, just a suicide weird. drug. Yep, too yeah. weird. Yeah. Well, and I like it as a suicide drug because also it's something that she could have nearby, almost like a gun. Yeah. If some, and especially if, if, if there was somebody, because we learned that companions like choose whoever they're servicing. Yes, servicing. We'll go with that. Yeah, so companions choose. But were something to go awry or something, like I like the idea that she has something to defend herself. I don't know. Well, at that point, it wouldn't be a suicide drug. It would be a murder drug. Yeah, Yeah, like like, it's like a cyanide pill. It's for you. It's for him. It doesn't matter who it's for. (laughs) Someone's going to die. It's a kill drug. It's a kill drug. For all the boys and girls. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But that's one of those things where occasionally Joss Whedon gets just a little over ambitious about things yeah, and the idea that like you can take this drug that then will murder all of these right. crazy psycho space monsters <laughs> who are doing terrible things to I you. I also don't like the idea of I don't know death by vagina or penetration or you know what I mean it's like there's something about that that's just like <laughs> yeah. But fortunately the Reavers aren't here to stay. They keep on moving and everyone thinks they're safe for the time being and they right. go oh they must have been not hungry looking for something else. Alright we're safe. And their ship is just so hulking and like yeah. gross looking. Sky and shark. Yeah. A giant sky, sky shark. shark. Ooh, I yeah. like that. Yeah. So um, then we get to, we're in the infirmary again. Mal is visiting with Kaylee and this is when mm-hmm. Kaylee tells him, you are a nice man. Yep. And again, I mean, like, like we had mentioned no, earlier. I'm a mean old man. Yeah. She reiterates it and then says, you're always looking after us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's very true. It's a really and beautiful scene. Nathan Fillion himself in the commentary here mentions that he sees all of the crew as parts of Mal that he's lost oh. and has to hold on to. Oh, that's so interesting. That is interesting yeah, and beautiful. He, <laughs> he says, uh, I look at it that Mal gathers to him that which he no longer has within himself. In Wash, he has his lust for life and sense of humor that he's lost. In Jane, he has selfishness. In Book, he has spirituality. In Kaylee, he has innocence. Everybody represents a facet of himself that he has lost, and that's why he keeps them close and safe 
yeah, at arm's length. And that's wow. perfect. Wow. He yep. was born to play this role. He, he really knows was. this character Nathan better than Fillion Whedon knows, knows this character. <laughs> I would like to shake that man's hand. Yep. That's amazing. At this point, then we, we transition scenes again to Inara's room with Simon talking to her. And you basically get this idea that he's like confessing to her and getting and getting counseling from her. You yeah. see this idea that Inara is the ship's counselor almost. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's the one there to comfort and to talk to people. Mm-hmm. It's not the role that she is given on the ship, but it's the role that she plays. Yeah. Right. Mm hmm. And then it's really interesting. We have this line here where whenever Mal busts in and is like, what's going on here? Um, And Anara says, uh, you know, I was giving the boy a free thrust before you dropped him off. Like, obviously, that's not true. It's not true. And I don't like it from Anara because it makes Simon uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And again, it's the two of them, Mal and Anara. Yeah, they just want to make everyone around them as uncomfortable as humanly possible. It's really weird. Are they really just trying to get everyone else out of the room so that they can just be together? I feel like they're just just trying to punch each other, but they just swing too hard and hit everyone around them. That is absolutely it, Vinton. That's absolutely it. Yep. Uh, I don't like it. I mean, I, I love it, obviously. Right, right, right. But it, yeah. That line in particular has always bothered me because I'm always just like, well, that's not, is that true? That's not true. That no. didn't just happen. No, it didn't just happen. Yeah. But now you get one of the best moments in the whole show. The greatest mislead of all television, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Where Mal oh. approaches Simon. And at this point, we saw Kaylee close her eyes. We didn't see anything more from that. She mm-hmm. just closed her eyes and dropped and her, her hand. And her hand fell, yeah. And... Yeah. Mal approaches Simon and says, Kaylee's dead. And everything goes into super slow motion. You get the, the music the swelling. The camera stops lo- starts losing focus. Mm-hmm. And everyone's moving slowly as Simon runs to see what's happening. And then he sees Kaylee just chatting it up with Shepard Buck. That man is psychotic. <laughs> Immediate cut to everyone, everyone else in the crew laughing. laughing. so hard. Yeah. Best cut. I love it. Yeah. It's so I good. really you enjoy the cut. I don't yeah. know. I mean, like, I'm trying to remember the first time I saw this. Like, and I, I don't know if you guys remember, but like, did you buy that? Did you believe that Kaylee had died yes. the very first time that you had seen this? I did. Yeah? I, I don't sad. remember. I, I think that I must have because I always fall for that. Yeah. I fall yeah, for right? every misdirection always. <laughs> I'm not I'm an sold astute in woman. when I watch shows and movies. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to tell me something, I'm going to believe it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm bad at head cannoning. Also, I'm just like, yeah. well, that's not true though. That the creator said this instead. And I do like that Mal gives Simon props. He says he's mighty fine at what he does because mm-hmm. she she pulled through. Yeah, I didn't expect her to heal this quick. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor Sure knows his trade is what that's he said. That's what he said. Very says. cowboy line. Yeah, he has a lot. Oh. Also, I skipped another one of his great cowboy lines, which is uh, when they were first talking about the Reavers, and he says, getting awful crowded in my sky. Yeah. That's a good cowboy line. Yeah, there's Mm. so many good quotes in this show. So many good quotes. I agree. So then we get to Whitefall. Whitefall is awesome, too. Yeah. Whitefall is very... Now we're in a Western. Yeah, yeah. Now we are absolutely I, we're finally 100%. At, a ca- at the cowboy part of the space cowboy. <laughs> in a Western. Right. Exactly. I really like that they video conference patients first. Yes. And you get to see her yeah. and that you get that set up. I love and- the line <laughs> Mal says, I think that woman's planning on shooting me again. <laughs> yep. He can just tell because she was so easy to deal with. Yes. Mm-hmm. She's like, he's, she's going to shoot me. And I like that there's this quick moment where you can tell he's frustrated and he starts to walk away and Zoe's like, well, let's just try our luck somewhere else. And he goes, our luck. And he snaps at her. The one yeah. he trusts mm-hmm. the most on that ship. Yeah. He loves the most on that ship. He snaps at He is at the end of his rope. And he like, says, no, it's anything particular about our luck these past few days. And you can tell he's just, he's Any kind of pattern. on edge. Yeah. He is on a edge. Super duper on edge. Yeah. But Whitefall. Yes. Looks like earth. Looks like Earth. Very Western. Yep. yep. Lovely scenery. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Wonderful. Uh, this is, so what we see is we see Mal, Zoe, and Jane walking up, and Mal is like, okay, she's going to have guys up here and here, and they're going to be coming this way, and they're going to do this. They're going to have snipers, and he points there and there, and yep. Zoe says, you think they're already in place? And he goes, yeah, they should be. To which I ask you, if those snipers are already in place... Did they not just watch Mal point them out? <laughs> <laughs> They're probably not looking through their rifles yet. They're probably okay, just hanging out. All right. you know, that having, is, that having, is a, true. having a cup of tea, something. Uh, <laughs> a cup of tea. <laughs> I don't know. Or yeah. a can of coffee. A can, can of coffee. It's the Western or the Eastern. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the way this is filmed. There's lots of lens flare yes. back before it was overused. Mm-hmm. And 
Whedon pointed this out on the commentary that they actually had really fancy lenses that didn't pick up lens flares, so they sent them back and used old ones. That's so that amazing. They would do a better job of picking that up and getting the look they wanted. Oh, that's, that's awesome. so funny. Um, I, so I also really love Jane testing the communications while he's standing right next <laughs> yes. to Mel. Because I'm standing you hear me? right here. Coming yes. loud and clear. <laughs> I'm yeah, standing you... right here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but the. Oh, well. <laughs> the, the transistor. It's just, it like. Good. Dumb Jane is my favorite thing. Yes. Like it really, really is. And it's, it's, oh. it's just, it's a nice bit of levity after just all of the heaviness and especially with Mal, like just yeah. totally losing his cool just a few minutes before. It's really nice to be able to get like the joking right after that. There's another line here too, that sets up the feel of this show. And I think a lot of what this show is about when Zoe says she still has advantage over us and Mal says, everyone always does. That's what makes us special. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of thesis does. statements right yeah, through this lots. episode. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. Lots of good ones. It's so true. Now we're going to see the two groups come up to each other face to face. We yes. have our showdown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Per se. And you get that quick uh, aside of Jane pulling the sniper off camera. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, just like Joss Whedon doesn't care to show you. He's just going to move past the action. Right, exactly. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and so we meet Patience, and she's talking to Mal, and they're all like, they, he throws her one of the bars with a stamp on it, yeah. and it turns out it's a protein bar. It's protein which bar. is it's so food smart. Stuff. It, it really, really is. looks like a gold bar. Yeah. It, something yes. you assume that mm-hmm. it's some kind of ore or and mineral. And we've mentioned things about like pirate treasure and all this throughout yeah. the thing, and it turns out it's food because, of course, That's the most commodity. precious commodity yeah. on the outer rim of all places places is gonna be food yep Very one smart. of those could feed a family for months longer if they don't like their kids too well <laughs> <laughs> yep but of course mal was right patience is not going to deal kindly absolutely mm-hmm. and not fire breaks out and you're not quite sure how this is gonna play out and if you know we didn't like we know now and looking back on this i could see you thinking that zoe's going to die here because right. she gets shot Flies back. Like, it looks like a really impactful yeah. Yeah. shot. And he's already faked us out once. Yep. Right. And here's my favorite cut of the show. She gets shot and it immediately cuts to her husband on the ship. Yes. Worrying talking about, about how, he, how worries. he worries. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I always worry. Mm-hmm. It's not too far from for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Damn not you, Whedon. Way. We are yeah. like primed. Right. Which it did cut to the ship a second earlier too to show us that Dobson has broken out. Yes. Yep. Uh, he attacks After Book. After freaking Book went Book over was and trying was like, to help him. And it's, I don't he like that moment. Attacks Book. I, it's good because I think it lets it be okay when Mal shoots him in the face later. You want to know why it's okay <laughs> that Mal shoots him in the face later? Because he's got River with a gun it's to true. her head. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely it's okay to shoot that but man in I the face. I think it's just like one more step of like, listen, he's a real bad guy. It's going to be okay that Mal shoots him. He's not a murderer. Like we get it. He's a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, so he, uh-huh. he just viciously attacks Book. Very, but, very vicious. Yeah. Well, he like, hits him in the knocks lungs. him out. All right. And then and when then he's unconscious, keeps hitting him. <laughs> like, keeps beating yeah. on him. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty vicious. Man of short temper. He can't get a signal through on his little cell phone thing, throws it against the wall. Good job, Dobson. But everything works out on Whitefall. They pull through. Mal and Zoe get patience pinned because Mal shoots the horse. Mal shoots it. the horse. You're not supposed to shoot the horse, you guys. Yeah. Well, he, he does show that he's not a murderer, though, right then and there. And I think a lot of people did complain. I guess I heard from Whedon himself that they thought Mal was kind of a murderer for shooting Dobson in the face. But he lets patience live. Yeah. And so Mal I think that shows his character. That's yeah, insane. He's like, no. He's not going to kill unless he has to. The yes. reason why he shoots Dobson in the face is because Reavers are coming. That's right. Reavers yeah. are coming. We're out of time. We don't yeah. have time to There's deal with it. Dobson no has a member of his crew mm-hmm. at gunpoint. Yeah. Yes. And if it sounds like we're like cutting through this second half of the story really quick, that's because the second half of the story is super duper quick. It goes, quick. Really fast. It goes yeah, the, super the fast. The There's a really lot quick. of buildup and then suddenly the pace increases like 150%. Yeah. It's uh-huh. crazy. Okay. <laughs> so we get the money from Patience. We leave Patience. Uh, Mal has that great line, go rule your little world. Yeah, I, I do like that. He says, I do the job. Then I get paid. Yes. Yep. That's mm-hmm. a good one, That's too. I do the job, then I get paid. Yep. yep. Takes the money. Uh, find out that Zoe had on, like, some chain mail or something. Yeah. Some kind She's of crazy Kevlar kind of on under her vest. Yeah. Or another. Totally great. And Reavers are back. And the Reavers are back. They have followed, apparently. Mm-hmm. They were... Goram Reavers followed yep. us. Yep. Yes. They were following. And that's a really intense situation. Everyone's freaking out again. And as they approach that ship, you see that on the ship situations are at an all time high. Yes, because we see that Dobson has gotten into the hangar. Uh, Simon's got a gun. River's there. Dobson grabs hold of River. Book is like stumbling in. And then Dobson is in the middle of giving his villainous monologue when in walks Captain Malcolm Reynolds. Bang. We're done. Jane. (laughs) And then they just chuck the corpse off the back of the thing. I love that moment. I love that moment so 
perfect. much. It's, it's perfect. so it's great. great. Yeah. yeah. And then the script, Dobson is supposed to die there, but Joss Whedon's original plan was to bring him back in a future episode that really? he didn't die. Mm-hmm. He actually lived through it. Hey. And it actually gets touched on in the three issue comic book miniseries, Serenity, Those Left Behind, which bridges the show and the movie. Oh, very So they cool. actually do get to touch on that story a little bit. That okay. They to do. We may have to do those comics as like a Patreon thing where we yeah. go through we'll and just kind of talk about that. We'll figure something yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So now we get like our big action set sequence set piece. And once again, I've got to say like, I think, I think that the effects are really good considering that the show was yes, done in 2002. Absolutely. And we get to see, um, Mal comes in and they're just trying to figure everything out and they decide that they need to get Kaylee into the engine room. And so they carry Kaylee into the engine room. And um, she's going to try to Jane tell does. people, she's going to try and tell, tell people how to do stuff. Jane specifically. <laughs> and this is the line that went, okay. So they decide that they're going to try and pull this move called the crazy Ivan. During this entire sequence, we see how calm Wash is every yes. time we look at him. I mean, he's just like, Everyone I need Kaylee in the engine room, please. Yes. And all of this uh-huh. stuff. And that was supposed to be, um, you know, that, that was just one of his character quirks is that when stuff gets crazy, Wash gets calm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm that way. Which he's they, a leaf on the a, wind, you could say. Yeah. They make a joke later that ruins a bit of that characterization in the message, but it was just but for the joke. No, yeah. And it's totally <laughs> worth it. And yeah. I love it. And we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. Um, but so we get Kaylee into the engine room. And then this is the line from this entire series that I I quote more than anything else whenever uh, Wash tells her, you know, we're going to pull Crazy Ivan. Uh, I need you to cut the hydraulics. And so Kaylee says to Jane, do you know yes. where the hydraulics are? And Jane just starts walking around. And Kaylee goes, look, look, look where I'm pointing. Yes. <laughs> we all say that all the time. Yeah. true. <laughs> I like when they're about to pull the Crazy Ivan. And she's like, it's real easy. It's real simple. Just do this. Uh, open this thing. And he opens it. And there's just wires everywhere. Wires everywhere. Like, uh, yep. Yes. Which is how I feel every time I deal with technology. No, That's true. Yes. Like, no, no, no. It's easy, Liz. You can do it. And I'm just like, uh. uh. Just before they actually <laughs> pull the crazy Ivan, I really like this moment with Mal and Anara where Anara is trying to talk to Mal and he's I'm like, glad, no, yes. get off the ship. And he like pushes yes. her. There's like a physical he push. Like, you have to leave. This is, okay, yes. He touches her shoulder, which is the first time they have touched like first this entire First time they ever touch, which episode. tells you so much. When someone won't touch you, they want you. Just so you know, people. Go ahead. That's confusing. I know. <laughs> I know. I know men like Mal. I'm just saying. Go ahead. <laughs> you can cut all that. I don't care. It's good. Nope, I'm like leaving it, it in. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, my note there says, she's worried about him and he touched her shoulder and they're so in love, those dummies. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that moment so much. This sudden, like, it seemingly uncharacteristic intimacy between the two of them. Yep. And it is beautiful and it is perfect and it is wonderful. And yeah, those dummies. Yep. Those dummies. <laughs> But the crazy Ivan works. It's a maneuver where the ship 180s and launches into space at full thrust. And it's awesome. the, yeah, fire and smoke and yeah. everything just all over the place. Yep. Totally crazy. And of course, right. the giant sky shark of the Reavers is too big and hulking to be able to yep. pull off a you move can't like do that. This. And mm-hmm. they just they burn up the ship as they take I'm about off. I would say they torch it too. Yeah. Yeah. As, it, as, it, as they it, take it doesn't off. kill them or anything. I don't think the ship just gets, you know, burnt and is yes. going the opposite mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. So they get away. Uh, I do like this idea of they don't defeat their enemies. They just live. They just, they just yeah, get away live to fight another day. Day. Live that's, to that's run like another, another thing day, the story, I guess. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> but there's a moment right here that some people may have noticed. I sure did. <laughs> Liz, did you notice what was happening with Wash when they're celebrating? Yes, I did. <laughs> Only be, maybe just because you had told me about it, but I definitely noticed. Go ahead. He's definitely miming holding the steering controls. <laughs> Alan Tudyk is supposed to, like what was, like they were supposed to be doing it from like a different angle I or something. I think they wanted a wider shot and then they realized they were actually getting. <laughs> so they had him back up from the controls and mime it so his arms would be in it, but his it's supposed arm, to be cut like, off at guys, the hands and not show you the controls cuz he's just miming it. Yeah. He's just got his hands out. It's a very serious moment too. It's really funny. And you wouldn't notice unless you were looking for and he's it. But like pause like it. He's steering. Yeah. Yeah, his hands adorable. are holding nothing. He's he's backed up away from the console, and his hands are on nothing. You guys, yep. it's amazing and beautiful and magical. <laughs> yeah. And if there's anything more beautiful and magical, it's immediately right after when Zoe looks at Wash and says, "I need this man to tear all my clothes off." Yep. <laughs> and Wash says, "Work, work, work." <laughs> Which is really great, especially because earlier they had been arguing about, you know, wanting, you know, like needing some time together and they've always got to ask Mal's permission. And she just told Mal this That's time. That's true. Yep. This time she mm-hmm. just told him. Yep. And he, yep. she, she and was he accepted Mal it. Absolutely. He actually, he more than accepted it. He seemed like happy for them. Yeah. Really. 
Which, again, if those are his, you know, well, like his life surrogates. His, like, like avatars? His avatars, yeah. His emotional avatars. Yeah. He's like, oh, good. Lucky emotional married me is happy and get in action. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mal. Poor Mal. Get your life together, Mal. So the ship enters space. The engines go off, at least from full thrust, because you're in space now. I, I love when we cut back to Kaylee after the crazy Ivan, and she's just stroking Serenity's, like, yeah, like just one of the beams girl. there. Good girl, good girl. My good girl. Right? Like, yeah. so Kaylee knows that Kaylee and Serenity are one in the same. Yeah, it's pretty great. And we get the scene where Book is now talking to Inara yes. in her room, and he's the one giving... Confession to her. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, and she tears. literally, put, when, when they had yes. that shot where she puts her hand the on his head. The silhouetted shot mm-hmm. where he's kneeling down and yes. she's standing over him. Yes. I love this idea. It's mm-hmm. just, it's, so lo- it's such a beautiful reversal of the roles. It is, absolutely. And it's a very human moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I like it very much. And I think it's Whedon that says in the commentary that Book is a man of peace, not at peace. Oh, <laughs> I was like, that's well, and really that good. Again, that is really good. And there are so many people who are in that same place, I think, in, yeah. in the show, because I think about that, like Mal is a man of action. He's a patriot without mm-hmm. a country and without a war. Yeah. Mm. So, oh, man, that's yeah. good. Yeah. And Inara is a romantic without love. This rotten Jeez. show. <laughs> whole life is about, you know, giving romance mm-hmm. and intimacy mm-hmm. and yet she has no actual intimacy in her life the closest thing she has to intimacy is probably with Kaylee yeah golly I love the scene when they're brushing when she's brushing her we're not there yet but yeah just, yeah I love it no it's good I love Kaylee and Anara so much yep Probably because I see that it is fulfilling a very like distinct need that Anara has in her life yes yeah, yeah. and that Kaylee has too yeah <sighs> and now we good finally show. have the moment where Simon and River get to have their talk yes. And yeah. I love the way River says, I didn't think you would come for me. And Simon says, well, then you're a dummy. It broke my heart. It's Say like that, that again. That, I talked over you. I'm he sorry. Says, you're a dummy if you think I wouldn't come for you. It's that big brother thing. It she's is. obviously, she's not stupid. She's brilliant. Mm-hmm. She's way smarter than you. But the big brother, you're a dummy if you thought mm-hmm. I wouldn't do this for you. Yeah. yeah. It I would absolutely broke my you. heart. I had completely forgotten about that exchange between them. And then just to see, I mean, like, um, you know, this, this, I mean, if, if she is, at the oldest, 17, like 16 or 17, and to have been tortured and experimented on and yeah. prodded and poked and all of this yeah. stuff and thinking for months that no one was going to be able to, I mean, like she wasn't able to even communicate with her family mm-hmm. and then knowing that like her parents were never going to figure it out and like just yeah. hoping and praying that Simon was going to know mm-hmm. when right. she sent that letter that made no sense. And then, I mean, they even asked him during that scene in the dining room, you know, how did you get her out? And he was like, a lot of money and luck. Yeah, which yeah. they'll change a little bit in the movie, but mm-hmm. we'll talk about that when it comes to Sure, it. sure, yeah. So then we get Mal and Jane's talk where Mal brings up the point that, hey, that lawman was tied up by you and he escaped. You didn't have anything to do with that, did you? And mm-hmm. Jane denies it. And he's like, but he offered you something, right? right. Why don't you turn on me? And he says, money wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. And they get that line of what happens when it is. That'll be an interesting day. Yes, it will. Sure will. Uh-huh. <laughs> and this is what I'm saying about like my theory about like Jane always living like instantly in the moment. In that moment, the money was not good enough. And yeah. It was better for Jane yep. to be loyal to the crew. Jane is At all about Jane. At some point mm-hmm. in the future, it will seem better to Jane. Yeah. To not be as loyal yes. to the crew, right. yes. Which you'll either get his origin that that's how he came onto the crew in the exactly. first place. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's Jane is, is absolutely, uh, Jane, nobody is Jane's friend. Jane is Jane's Jane friend. Jane is Jane's friend, yes. Yep. And then Simon enters the room as Jane's leaving. Yes. Simon is yeah. very confused because Mal says, it's better for you to stay on the run and no better place to do it than on our ship. And you really get to know more character here. I think Mal is taking the advice that Kaylee gave him earlier when she said, you just have to have faith in people. Mm. Oh, wow. And so Simon, of course, says, how do I know you won't kill me in my sleep? I love that quote. I'll probably quote that when we're freak, freaking out. But Mal says that he had a good day. And I think this line from Simon sums it up perfectly, this whole mm-hmm. thing. You had the alliance on you, criminals and savages. Half the people on the ship have been shot or wounded, including yourself. And you're harboring known fugitives. And Mal says, well, we're still flying. And Simon says, that's not much. And Mal says, it's enough. Yep. Yeah. And then we cut to credits. Credits. It's an excellent Perfect ending. Cap. Yep. It's perfect. 
It's an excellent pilot. I can't you believe guys. they didn't run it as the pilot. Fox, what is wrong with you? I don't know, but we don't have to worry about yeah. that now because we have this. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're here. Thank Fox you, Netflix. Did wrong, which Netflix, Netflix has, the there's a lot of things that universe. Fox did wrong. <laughs> I love my captain. Okay, so now we are going to talk about what was your favorite part in this two-hour-long episode extravaganza pilot, amazing, extraordinaire, awesomeness. Who wants mm. to go first? <laughs> oh, that's hard. It is hard. There's a lot of really good stuff. There's a lot of great stuff, and it's an hour and a half, so this one's even harder. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be a little bit vague in I have two favorite parts. I know what they are. They're two very specific parts, and I think that I said this whenever we were doing the beat by beat, but my first very, very favorite part, I really, I mean, I really, really, really genuinely love, with all my heart and soul, the relationship between Anara and Kaylee. It yeah. means the world to me. I love it so much. I love the way that they interact. I love um, when Anara calls her Mei Mei, which is Mandarin for little... It's Zhao yeah. Mei Mei, which is Mandarin for little sister. Um, uh, I was going to get that tattoo for a long time, actually. Uh -huh. I actually learned the Mei Chinese Mei. characters yep. for that and stuff. And then my second favorite part is when Mal strolls onto the ship and shoots Dobson in the face <laughs> and gets the yes. job done. Yes. You guys, yeah. so many problems in fiction would be solved if someone would just stroll in and shoot someone in the face. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? So if I, Voldemort would have done that to Harry, it <laughs> would have been a way shorter series. Yep. That's true. So I actually have three, but I'll make them quick. It was a double-sized episode. So yes, I'll yes. try to do this in the future. But... Early on, we already kind of touched on this one, mm -hmm. the Jane, Mal, Kaylee interaction where Jane says, Captain, can you stop her from being cheerful, please? And Mal says, I don't believe there's a power in the verse that can stop Kaylee from being cheerful. Sometimes you just want to duct tape her mouth and dump her in the hold for a month. And Kaylee says, kisses his cheek and says, I love my captain. I love yeah. my captain. And then, of course, washing his dinosaurs. <laughs> it's a fertile dinosaurs. land and we will thrive. We will rule. And we will call it this land. <laughs> I think we should call it your grave. Ah, uh, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is an evil laugh. Now die. Oh, <laughs> Such God. A good, oh, I love it. Oh, I love it so God much. in heaven. <laughs> but there's one other one that I didn't bring up. Just before that last cap on everything, Simon says, how do I know you're not going to kill me? That's going to be a drinking game now. Yeah, someone says, Simon says, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> drink. He says, how do I know I'm not that you won't kill me in my sleep? And Mal says, mm. you don't know me, son. So let me explain this to you once. If I ever kill you, you'll be awake. You'll be facing me and you'll be armed. It's a great line. Mal Another is good a cowboy good line. There's man. that cowboy line again. Yes. Yeah, Mal I, is a great man. Mal is a great man. Yeah. It's interesting because, again, he can be an asshole. Yes. But he does. He's got a heart of gold in there. He's just, it's just a little roughed up is yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. He just got a little broke. He's got a lot of feelers. Yeah. So my favorite part is going to have to be everybody around the dinner table, which probably doesn't oh, surprise anybody. Oh, of course. Anybody, no, not surprised at all. It's, that's when everybody comes together as a family for mm -hmm. the first time. And it's also when we re... I mean, we've been getting to know everybody in a big way, but, but that's when we get the relationship, especially with... Uh, that everybody has for Kaylee mm -hmm. and how much Mal protects and takes care of his crew and how much he is absolutely the captain. Yes. So I, I love that scene. It's great. It's really wonderful. Excellent. All right. Well, that was Serenity, the episode, not the movie. Uh-huh. So we did it. Okay. So next week, we will be covering Train Job, which right. is like a smaller pilot. And we'll talk <laughs> about that some more whenever we get there to get to that. And how that works. You can live tweet that episode with us on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yes. Follow the hashtag MF. Shindig. Yep. And if you need more information about that, you can follow us on Twitter at Common Room Cast. You can follow me personally at Elsa Grab the Salt. I'm Lizbeth Ray 555. And I'm at Flesh Either. Not like a Reaver. Not like a Reaver. No. Oh, God. But it is like a Reaver. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's other types of flesh, guys. Like Ew. animal flesh. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I get it. I All love right. animal flesh. <laughs> If Facebook is your thing, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash common room cast. And if you liked this show and if you would like to support us for as little as a dollar a month or whatever you can afford, you can head on over to patreon.com slash common room radio where you can find, um, well, the outtakes for every episode right. of Mighty Fine Shindig. <laughs> uh, we are going to put up on there just for our patrons. So just you guys get to hear us flub all of our words and uh, make jokes and say all the swears. So if hearing us swear makes you laugh a lot, then head on over to Patreon and support us. And then you can hear us swear just for you. Indeed. And, and all of my inappropriate jokes. Sorry. Yeah, all of them. Everyone. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. They're really <laughs> funny. Just not for the general audience. Only for true believers. 
and it would really help us out if you could rate and review us on iTunes. All right. So thank you guys so much. And we will talk to you next week. And we hope that you can join us for the live tweet next Tuesday. Uh, I am Sarah Kate Pizant. I'm Liz Stevens. I'm Vinton Bain. And can we maybe vote on the whole murdering people issue? <laughs>